Right, so finally getting back into it, we're in the start of November, December, and let's just pull out some operational cards here so we can all look at them. Uh, here's the Axis card. Okay, they're going to be doing a treaty. Keeping in mind that the victory points uh, show that they had got a plus one advantage, this will be helping them on the treaty, which is quite important. All right, the Western Allies, having played military aid, are going over to Churchill Diplomacy because they need to get a play of this in before they can do some other things. So they're going to be doing diplomacy and the... Finally, the Soviets, who grabbed the Finnish frontier last time, are going to be doing this. Zukov takes command. Um, some might say that might be premature, but it's really important, I believe, that the Soviets are ready for action. We don't really know. It's still possible the Germans will flip over and come our way, although it certainly doesn't look like it. Okay, so we're going to get started with this and make some decisions now with the Axis. Let's start with them. I'm going to pause this. All right, so we got to the political phase and the Germans on their first treaty roll rolled on the... They add one to that and they have a diplomatic incident. Oh no, so let's see what that means. Diplomatic incident table. They roll on this. Okay, let's see what happens. With a six, nothing happens. Here, uh, it goes to the guarantee table. And on the guarantee table, we rolled a six, we roll on the conference table. And on the conference table, we rolled a six again, which is military aid. So no Spain coming into the war yet, but we got some military aid. Okay, so they got an extra Italian step out of that. What they've done here, as I adjust this troop convoy, for the Italians is put here. I want to get this beefed up because, you know, the Allies could get a result on Tripoli. You need a two-step unit in there to make sure that doesn't happen if they get a resistance result, some Arab tribes or somebody coming in here to attack the Italians. So we'll put the troop convoy there. That means no supplies. Uh, they do have the scratch convoy, but to use the scratch convoy... I need a key port with a unit on it, and I don't have that at the moment. Um, as you can see, if I'm going to do something about Malta, I really need to get a German air base nearby. So we're going to take care of that as well by putting a German unit possibly in Palermo. Okay. So, we're also doing a sub-raid in the Eastern Med. I want to try to see if I can't... Here's the sub. It's a sub-patrol is what it's called. So, they're on patrol. I'm going to roll on the patrol die. This happens in the support segment. Okay, select an expo from your force pool. Roll on the sub-patrol table to see if a ship is spotted. Okay. And let's see what we got. We rolled a six. Small ship spotted. Attack a CA or a CD with the lowest speed factor. So do we have anything like that in that fleet? This is fleet number... What is that? Fleet four. Okay. And yeah, let's see. We've got a few battleships in there couple of cruisers. All of them are rather slow, actually. Um, they're all about the same. We'll pick the Devonshire. I think that's what that is. Devonshire, right? 
Two dice are rolled for the sub patrol, the torpedo factor. And a five and a three. Ship is disabled. And that's all we got. Let me sort that out. So the result of that is we have a sub and the Shropshire, or Devonshire, excuse me, are both in the naval warfare delay box. And so now we move on to any other supports that the Germans want to put down. Probably not. They don't have an offensive and they don't have any supplies in the med. So at this point, um, not much is going to happen here. Um, let's go ahead and do the movement phases. Okay, so the Germans uh, redeployed a little bit, got a little bit into North Africa here, sent some stuff down to Tripoli. Over here, they're sending some key units. There's an armored unit and a marine in here in anticipation of being able to get into Spain to get after Gibraltar. Um, I decided not to do a commerce raid simply because it didn't make sense. Um, the uh, idea for this German fleet is they need all the fleet they can get when they do this invasion of Britain. So for now, we're not going to focus on trying to take out troop convoys, although it's very tempting as I'm starting to try to pressure them here. Maybe I should try to get a possible bridgehead and attack Malta. He's not in a position right now with any air units there. Might have to put an air unit in Malta right now. I can't afford not to have some air cover if the Germans are going to bring some stuff down. At the moment, two, four, six, eight, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. They're not in range of attacking Malta with any air, um, but they're going to be. Uh, right now, they just haven't made those commitments yet. Really want to see what happens with Spain. Okay, that's it for the Germans at this time. Okay, the Western Allies have picked their card. Now that it's uh, Axis tied now, can't play any games. There's some players who like to leave objective hexes empty so that the British can never play these cards, but there's a garrison requirement the way we're playing, and we're not going to be allowed to do that nonsense. Okay. So, Lend Lease to Allies is the card picked. Uh, let's see. Russia's Pasha War, or France is an active Western modern country with a Pasha War. No, we can't do Lend Lease to Allies. That's not what I meant to do. Hold on a second. That was the wrong card. There's another card that I can play. Lend Lease to Britain. That's the one I wanted. At least to allies is for when Russia comes in. Okay, so we're going to do this one. Uh, and we got to remove. Okay, so we're going to apply this card. We remove uh, Operation Jupiter. It's no longer possible. All right. And Britain is not a pack. Apply neutrals pressured. Okay. Apply neutrals pressured. Hmm. So we're going to figure out how to apply neutrals pressured here. And that should be interesting. Oh, sorry. I was acting as if uh, Britain had picked this card this turn. They didn't do that. So Operation Jupiter is still in there, but it's going to be removed next turn. So I'll just keep it over there. And we have Churchill Diplomacy. They get a British step. What have they got? You want to keep these colonial ones for later. They've got the defense step. This is a good one to get for the Brits. It can be uh, turned into a port of fort and They may not want to put that in Malta or something. So let's put it here in Bristol. So they can troop convoy that over there this troop convoy to here. All right. And this is exactly why... <laughs> now, I don't know if I will do that. 
but this is, and, and I didn't do the troop convoys at the right time. I was just trying to illustrate that I can bring that over to here, put it in Malta, then flip it over, and I'll have an extra step in there, plus it'll be, uh, got a shift because it's a, a fortress. Um, however, I might want to keep that in England. Uh, since England is threatened, I should realistically maintain that attitude. So, yeah, I won't put it over here in Bristol. I'll put it in London so I can flip it over immediately when I get it in, in, in the organizational phase. I'll do it now. Okay, so I picked the card. Britain got their step. They don't have any miners. So, political events segment. We'll roll one die. Churchill's out there doing his thing. He rolls a three. Plus one is four. Roll on the conference table, it looks like. Got a plus one because of the position of the axis tide marker. So, um, plus one if it's axis tide for each BP. Uh, Allied Crusade. There's no European USCL marker. And there's no influence or neutrality marker. So, we do roll on the conference table. Conference table, the infamous conference table. It's the same on all these factions here. Here's the roll. Again, with a plus one. Roll to three on the conference table. Oh, another neutrals pressure. Ah, you got the neutrals pressured. So... This is quite useful because that's going to allow them to put this influence marker on Spain. And that's going to be very upsetting to the Germans. Very, very upsetting. Okay, let's move the British and get that part done. So we had a successful turn for the Allies by getting another one of these results. Um, it's quite annoying for them to be able to place that marker on the treaty country like that. Neutral pressures, you can uh, place a friendly influence marker in the country. So that's what they were able to do. Good timing for that, eh? Just when the Germans are trying to get a treaty going with them. So that's that. All right, so demanding the finish frontier is finished. Zukov takes command is the card, okay? Uh, and so that's really it, the option card segment. We get some stuff in the delay box and three steps. So let's take care of that. Okay, so the Russians are deliberately playing it safe here. They played their uh, Zukov takes command card, activated that. They put a few steps on over there in Russia. Not really worth flashing over there. And they put the peace offer card for the next card just to make sure if they are attacked by Germany, they're prepared. And after that, they'll probably start getting some HQs. By this time now, Germany, seeing these results, they're going to, well, they've already made the decision really, but they're not going to try to invade England until 42 when they get the, they got stuff they want to try to do. They've got to get some of these diplomacies to work out. So, that is essentially the end of the turn. Let me find the correct cards. Got to look at all of these. Let's see if it's a play cards. Okay, here it is. Okay, so Russians. Permanent conditional events, border defense, Russia rises, land lease to Russia. Okay. And now we have the delay segment. So let's do the delays. Not a lot of delays. We got these two Soviet units right here. Uh, the delay DRMs for the Soviets are uh, Total War is not in effect, War Production is not in there, no jet fighters, no Euro bombers. So that's not an issue. Okay. 
And so we roll the yellow die for the first one. A five and a six. Well, I guess they're not going to get those in anytime soon. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. So now what? Yeah, we have the naval warfare delay box. Let's see how this torpedo attack worked out. The Germans will be the gray die. Yellow die for the Brits. Okay, now if they roll a six, could be bad news. So, oh, well, they really fought to the death there. Okay, so it's going to be six turn delay for both of them. That's actually beneficial for the allies really and now we have an additional delay black dies the german one and five for that so seven turn delay now in the delay box though we do have delayed drms so i have an axis tied for minus one uh intensive bombing so just a minus one for them so they have a six essentially um sorry this is like this. I put these dice in the wrong order. It's like that. So that comes off. Six turns for this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Subs are not fighting well. Eleven turns, though, for this thing. So it's out for a long time. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I did forget to move this marker up. I did get also an additional hmm, carrier and the Victorious. I'll put that in Gibraltar. And the Molotov. Looks like it's in the scrummy Black Sea area. So there's another ship for the Russians in that area. Okay, so there's always a lot to remember in this game, and uh, easy to forget. So the delays are done, and uh, yeah, we're ready to advance the turn marker. Let's move that up. Turn marker here. And, oh look, the Italians get yet another big battleship. And the Germans get a air unit. I wonder what they can do with this. They have quite an arsenal here. That's for sure. Okay, so let's put Vittorio with the Italian fleet. And all of that is good. So it will be the second turn, and we're finally into 1941, folks. Pause the tape. Uh, hello, folks. Still running a bit behind schedule on this video uh, because just certain things keep happening. For example, a friend of mine had his ASL scenarios chewed up by his dog, so I had to scan some stuff for him. <laughs> Strange things happen. Anyway, then my scanner wasn't working, so I had to troubleshoot that. And uh, it was uh, scanning everything skewed. It was really weird. I sort of fixed it. It's not doing the same thing it usually does when scanning. But anyway, enough of my problems. Let's talk about the Germans' problems. So it's the start of uh, January, February, 42. And uh, what's happened here in Spain is the Allies have gone in with their nefarious diplomats and tried to support the resistance that Hitler can make a treaty. Now I've already started on this course of action. Normally it's a 50-50 shot and I only have a five or six chance to get it in, but since I've started along this route, let's give it a try. And we'll continue now, since there is no option card segment. The first step in the sequence of play is the initial administration phase, which starts with the political events segment. And so let's give this a try. Option card, come on, they need a five or a six. A one, oh. And uh, diplomatic incident table. Okay. Well, 
could possibly result in some kind of treaty with Spain. Let's see what happens with the diplomatic incident. Here we go. Ideally, well, we'll see what they can get. They roll a six, which is a guarantee table. Things are just not working the way the Germans need them to work here on the treaty marker. Guarantee table of four, no result. And an absolute staggering ineffectiveness for the treaties for the Germans this turn. Okay. Well, they're not quite happy with that, that's for sure. Uh, I am going to do a couple of moves here. I will be putting the supply convoy in. Or do I, yes. I, do, I want to proceed to do something down here. Maybe I can um, embarrass. Hitler's mad. He, he wants to embarrass the, the British now. So we're going to probably do an attack down here in the med. You can see the Germans are set up a little bit. So we'll set up a supply convoy here uh, in the support segment. Um, Brits are not positioned to do anything about that. Uh, so, now as you can see, I have to have an air base. I can place the air here, but not back here. Uh, oh, if I put a German unit up here, I could do that. So what can I get? I got two, three, four, two to one. One air unit would make it a three to one. Maybe I can blast through over here. So it looks like we're going to have a fight on our hands. Let's get that set up. All right, let's do this air-to-air -air battle. You can see that the interceptor has come to take on the German air, which can be placed right here. Okay, so... Well, we can move them to the battle board. right here to resolve this. Don't really need the battle board, but it just kind of helps to watch. It has the sequence of play on here. So this is a, it's an automatic day action since it's uh, two air units uh, and we just resolve the attacks. So the phasing player has five dice to roll on this chart. You can see they're up against one of the better British units, a 4-4. This is almost an even fight, really. Uh, the 4-4 is going to probably target that. All right, so here's the five dice from the German side. We have the air battle for Egypt. And nothing. They rolled absolutely nothing. Okay, well, let's see. There are four shots. Now I'll put them all on the one. I suppose I should split them up two and two. Yeah, we'll do that. Here's the two, the one and three. Here's the one on the two, four. No effect. And the next one. Oh, they did get a hit on it. Did they shoot it down? The roll is a three, and the damage factor of this unit is only a two, so this is sunk, and this gets put in the delay box. Well, actually, I think we just put it here in the destroyed box for now. So now we have to see if there's a second day and night action. I think we want to try to force those interceptors away, so uh, they'll be used up unless they win. I need to check the sequence on this. The Germans don't want to face a repulsion result here by not damaging the Brits at all, so they got to try to take it on, but this could even be worse 
for them. All right, so here comes the Germans. They have two dice versus four. And they missed again. Hmm, these pilots aren't trained. And now the RAF 4-4 four, four rolls again, but it does not damage. Okay, so I believe this is a stalemate. And because it's a stalemate, both of the air units will go to the delay box. And both of these goes to the used asset box. So they can't be played again this turn. Now the problem here for the Germans is that they don't have any more air units to continue fighting here. So that was definitely a victory for the allies. So the question is going to be, do they want to attack at 2 to 1? And the answer is probably going to be no, they do not. So we're going to say that this is something that would be different that would happen in this particular game. Um, in the old game, they could keep placing air units out and keep fighting the air battle. Here, we run out of uh, fighters and pilots and stuff like that, so we can't even continue to fight the air battle. Uh, and then the rest of the battle will be played out in the delay box to see which uh, air unit was damaged the most and so forth. All right. So, interesting change from Vanilla to Taller Creek. All right, so we're going to move up here in the movement phase. We're going to, yeah, we'll bring this up. Actually, we need to bring up this because we need to go one, two, three, and we don't need Tobruk occupied at this time. It'd be better to bring these guys all the way up to here. Now, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five. Can't quite get the two to one. When this guy can make it up later, he can. Um, <clears throat> sorry, this is a supply convoy in the central med. All right, so, well, since we don't have a troop convoy, We'll go to here, and that's the end of the unit's moves in Africa. And that will take care of the rest of the board and swing on from there. Okay, so the interesting thing about these rules, um, <laughs> not really quite sure why they're doing this, but for example, this is, will be a supplied hex uh, with a German unit. So this will be a German airbase here. This is an airbase. However, it's not a suitable base for basing LBAs. LBAs have to be in a city or port hex. Now, notice that they cannot be in Benghazi because Benghazi is not occupied by a unit. So that's not a possible air uh, suitable base. <laughs> so Tobruk is a suitable base, as is Rhodes. These are both feasible locations and it starts to become more interesting because you know I need a bunch of air in here since I'm going to press forward with this and um, the British seem determined themselves to defend it so we'll see how much they're willing to try to stop me from getting through here probably quite a bit um, and uh, they really can't get a lot of troops down here either uh, at this point in time, they're not going to abandon England, although they're quite happy right now that Spain didn't switch sides yet. So, all that being said, let's um, go ahead now, and we're going to rebase. You're allowed to rebase in the reserve movement phase. Uh, yeah, so... We're going to send some air units down, and these air units will be... Yeah, the thing is, that the interesting thing is the axes will have to rebase first. So that's a conundrum for them, isn't it? I'm going to try to send as much as I can down here, which is basically, I've got the used asset there, so that's going to come back. Um, 
we'll go ahead and put three more units down here. The two interceptors and a bomber, I guess, from Berg, from Hamburg. That'll leave that one that can go out there. So quite a few of my air assets now are being redeployed to the Mideast, or at least Egypt. So, huh, that's going to be interesting. The British will have to respond to that. All right, that's it. Okay, so let's finish up the Germans here and the uh, their turn. All right, so the Germans have completed their turn. You'll notice that they've gone ahead and set up for a possible invasion of Malta. If you can see that here. So, all of these things are pressuring the British. Now they've moved all of these air units down here to possibly make these attacks. Now the attack on Malta will take quite a few assets and involves some fleet action probably. Uh, the, yeah, I've got to rebase this Italian fleet to that side. So the fleet will rebase to Naples. This might be an interesting time for the British to do some kind of raid on that. So we're going to check that out when it's their turn as well. I'm not so sure they can do it though. I think you have to do these kinds of base raids in the seasonal phase. And this is base attacks. Now base attacks can be done uh, in the support segment. Sub patrols can be done in the support segment. Um, and raids, I guess raids, those are commerce raids. So yeah, the British might try a base attack just for fun over here see what happens so we got to play this game you know stretch our wings here okay so here we go and i believe that's it for the germans let's just check the war and peace conditional events no they're not in conquest or occupation of anything so that's it allied turn right so the british have noticed with alarm the Redeployment of troops to, not troops, but German LBAs. They sent quite a few down to the Med. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to respond to that. Because we don't want to lose Malta really quite yet. Uh, so we're going to have to send some good stuff down to Malta. The Germans only have two LBAs in the area right now. Okay, so... Uh, Stuff in the used asset box is not yet available. Anyway, we start with the diplomacy. We've got Churchill diplomacy plus one. We rolled a five. Conflicting plans, no result for the Churchill diplomacy. Okay, now we're going to constitute a base attack. I think we're going to try to do a base attack on the Italian fleet in Naples just to see what happens. Okay, so we're going to do this uh, raid in the Western Mediterranean. All of these ships, as you can see, well, let's uh, try to align this thing. Yeah, okay. So they'll be coming from Gibraltar. We roll an intelligence roll to see how many ships are going to be going on this. Okay. Here's the intelligence roll. Six, seven. Oh, I can send seven ships on this raid. So I don't think I need to send that many, but I do want to send the two carriers. Uh, I got three carriers I can send. Now I'll just send the two carriers and I'll keep a carrier back. I won't send the repulse, I'll send the Ramillies. Repulse in the hood will be held back. And then I'll send uh, the Devonshire. So these guys will be on the raid itself. So they're there. 
Okay, I have to, in order to do this, I have to have a CV fleet in the force pool. It actually doesn't leave the force pool. Okay, now this is all coming down on Naples, of course. Where is Naples? Right here. So I should probably move these guys down. All right. So that's uh, step one is to roll on that. Let's take a look at this base attack table here. Okay. Everything's on the card more or less. Not exactly everything, but most of it. Okay, so step two, okay. All right, make speed checks. No speed checks are necessary. Roll on the base attack table. Okay, if I roll a six, the Raiders are gonna be discovered. Let's find out what the roll is. Oh, oh, oh it's a six. They did it, they were discovered. I wonder what this is going to mean. This could be quite interesting now. Okay, the first step is that this depletes the CV fleet and it's just put in the delay box. Step two, the non-phasing player may immediately form an interceptor task force to fight the ships. Uh, the interceptor task force may include either one ships or one LBA, but not both. Okay. Uh, so they have quite a few ships there. Uh... They may just use an LBA because I have a good one here that could come out. Um, if ships are used, okay, there's no ships. The LBA must be able to trace an air unit path 9 less axis from its base, no problem. Okay. Air and naval combat between the raiding task force and the interceptor task force is conducted normally with the exception that the result is always a stalemate. Okay. All right. What I need to find out here is if the support unit needs to be used. Yeah, there's no use of a task force. So the thing is I can only use an LBA or a ship. I can't use both ships and LBAs. Okay. And I don't know if I want to send out the Italian fleet against that uh, task force. I'll just intercept it with air units instead. So uh, we have a day action here. Uh, and we're going to have these carriers, the Victorious and the Eagle, will be fighting against this LBA. Okay, this works out well for the Germans because... They only have three factors, so they can only fire back with one shot, whereas they get four shots. And they're going to put three shots on the Victorious and one shot on the Valiant, I think. Yeah, we'll do it that way. They get one shot back. So three shots on the Victorious by the Germans. One, two, and two. That's not going to do anything. And the Victorious LBAs, no, they don't shoot on the LBA with any effect with a three. So, uh, unfortunately for the Germans, they weren't able to snag anything, and now they can retire. And it's retreated automatically as a stalemate result. So, although none of the assets, ships, or LBAs were damaged... The 444 goes into the, uh, that's the 44 LBA, goes into the used asset box for the turn. That's no big deal. The worst result was the delay result for the CV fleet uh, for the Brits. Now, hopefully for them, that won't be a long delay. So it makes things quite interesting here. The rest of the ships that went, participated in the raid are now here. So that might make the invasion of Malta quite a bit easier. Okay, so now they're gonna place, um, I suppose they had to place their troop convoys first, but they've been placed. So the question is, do I want to reinforce Malta or not? I have to think about this. I might have to roll for an intelligence roll to decide what's the best course for the British here. 
Right. So the British aren't going to reinforce it with any land forces. They got to keep everything at home. Um, they will simply redeploy in the. They don't really need to do any movement in this phase. So they're going to redeploy the air forces they deem necessary to help protect the situation. So uh, they're going to deploy, redeploy in that phase. They will redeploy. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to put two three three fours here in Malta. Also, with this, it can be used as a bomber, so that's quite useful if they decide to uh, come on in. Not really sure exactly why a heavy LBA will be better or not. This one will go back to Great Britain. Um, let's see. I think we'll put a couple of these big ones on top. These port raids that can occur, it might be useful to have these guys on the ports. Let's put a couple here so I can put something in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm trying to think of all contingencies here. Still don't have enough air down here. Um, I got the 4-4 four four coming back and he's got, he's going to have a lot uh, coming back. And probably better put one more unit, one of the four fours. Wow. Cream of the British Air Force down in Alexandria. There they go. So, quite an intense uh, realignment of LBAs there. Okay, now we can go on to the Russian turn. The Russians don't have much to do. Maybe a little bit of redeployment. Let's check it out. Yeah, the Russians don't have much of anything, so let's look at the delays. Uh, we'll do the British delays first. They got two assets here. Yellow will be the CV fleet. I'm going to show the rolls here. So the yellow will be the CV fleet. And the black will be the interceptor. So the CV fleet does come back in two turns. That's not too bad. The interceptor, though, is five turns. That's not so good. All right, let's see what happens to the Germans now. The Germans have got minus one. This is what they're rolling for. Okay, we'll do the Air Force last. Um, actually, we'll just do them all at the same time. We'll go red, gray, and blue. Red, gate, gray, blue, they're all minus ones. Let's do this thing. There's the 3-4 that was destroyed. Actually, I'm not sure. Do I roll the delays first? Yeah, I guess the delays are rolled at the same time these assets are redeployed. So here we go. So what did I say? Red, gray, blue. Here we go. Red is a one. Blue is a one. Gray is a four. That's the Air Force. One, two, three, four. So the Germans barely won that air battle. These two come in right away, though, and that's a huge success for the Germans to get that HQ back in. If they can get into Spain, they can get down there towards Gibraltar. Okay. Then the used assets come back in. These were the used assets. Okay. These used assets go back to their port, Gibraltar. The ones in the Western Mediterranean, these are all going to be deployed in the Med, as we discussed earlier. Actually, uh, one of them will be deployed in... Huh, I got a 4-4 four, four now. Hmm. I think I'll press the issue here. Like that. The Malta invasion is more or less a decoy, one might say. Okay, quite interesting. They'll put the 4-4 asset in Alexandria. They're not messing around here. They're going to go for it. Um, so, yeah. Keep in mind, we can do air raid bases with these heavy bombers. They can go and try to uh, attack air units that are on bases. 
it's something to remember. Um, you can't do it in mud. But it's something to remember. You can try to take out some of their air forces by doing some air raids. I guess that's sort of the Battle of Britain. You can do one of those a turn. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, there's some nuances here with Schiff's Creek that make it really exciting. So that's the end of the turn. We're going on to the next turn now. And let's just see what's coming in to play. We've got March and April. So oh, we've got some stuff. Uh oh, the Italians have their surface fleet now. And the Germans get two more LVAs. What do they want those? Well, they go in Germany for now, I think. They got an 864 and an HQ. Very helpful to get. We'll put those over here in the force pools. Then I get the Italian surface fleet. That's another asset that's going to come into play here as we try to take out Malta. Too bad I don't have my Marine over there. I have the Marine, the German Marines in Bordeaux because he was supposed to be helping out with Gibraltar, but that didn't pan out. So, so far my Marines are not being as useful as I'd hoped. It's kind of what Thomas said would happen, that they may not actually be that impactful. All right, and that's uh, also we get this Italian. This is going to be useful to make it. This is one of the few detachments the Axis will get, and I can use that to make a detachment in Tobruk, freeing up some assets. So keep that there. Okay, it's time for the next turn, which is the spring of 41. Hey, hi folks, it's now Sunday, falling behind schedule on this. Uh, trying to catch up here. We've got the end of January and February, and now we're moving into March. So reveal the cards here. The Germans have a treaty card discarded, and they have another treaty. So they're going to try again. I've really been thinking hard about this. And it's a bit hard to decide if I should continue to go for Spain. I only get it on a plus five or six, but the other best attack, oops, other best uh, attack or approach would be to go for Yugoslavia, but again, the Western Allies have a minus one on that. Poland has a minus one. So the only logical inroad would be Budapest, where I have a plus one and a very good chance of succeeding there. Um, the Italians, I can't do that. That's not a, I can't do Greece because that's not a German dependent. Albania is an Italian dependent. So, a bit frustrating on this front. I mean, I could go for Vichy France, but I don't have the fleet there anymore, so what's the point? Um, it doesn't really do me anything. There's no place they can go. It does get me North Africa. I grant you that. But, no, I think we have to go for Spain yet again. Let's get the dice ready. Let's randomly pick a die, because I haven't been picking the right colors. <laughs> That's so superstitious. The green die is picked. Okay, so that's the die we're going to roll for the treaty during the political event statement. But now we have to uh, engage in this part first. So, let's see. We have to remove puppet government. So that's gone. Giving us the choice in the summer. Given our failing so far. I think we're going to have a summer of diplomacy. New world order uh, is the next logical thing. If, if this all fails on this side in the Iberian Peninsula, then I need to set up for Barbarossa um, because it's going to be really hard for me to get anything. Um, the problem with, of course, new, treaty, uh, new world order is there's no offensives on here. So 
there's no blitzing that's going to be going on, but it's a diplomacy period, so what do you expect? All right, so we'll put that in there. The Germans get two car, uh, two steps, so let's get those. And we'll put them... I guess we better start building up the Far East. <laughs> as it's starting to look like we're going to have to go that way if we don't get lucky here. So two steps. The Germans can do a raid. Mm, was it a raid? I'm thinking of. Yeah, but I don't want to do any commerce raidings with my fleet yet. It's just a bit too early. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Tough decision here. I think we'll wait. We'll wait until next turn. If we don't get what we want in Spain here, um, we'll probably want to do that. So here's the roll. Looking for that five or six. Oh, another one. Boy, I'm rolling with crap on here. Diplomatic incident table, though, in some ways, does give us a chance. Okay, diplomatic incident table at zero. Political DRMs are still in effect. Plus one for Axis Tide, minus one for the influence. Diplomatic incident table is a two. Neutrality. Ugh. Well, that ends all of that. I think that's the end of the approaches on Spain, because I think he gets a neutrality marker there. Actually, maybe it's not that bad. If the selected neutral minor country contains an influence marker, remove it. Or if it does not contain an influence or neutrality marker, I could put a neutrality marker on it. Well, actually, this is somewhat favorable, because I can pull off this British influence now. So it was somewhat of a diplomatic success there. Now let's put this influence marker in the pool of markers here. Okay, well, I guess the Germans can't complain too much about that. Now here's, uh, and now, so we're ready to go ahead and do the next phase, which is, of course, looking on the chart, support segment. So let's see what we're going to do. We might not want to send another sub out here or place a sub. Let's see. This might be a good time for the Germans to try to place a sub fleet in the strategic warfare box and uh, get a plus one DRM if the British place support units out and things like that. There's going to be some battles here, so that's probably a good ploy and what we have to do is the British is decide if we want to stop that. So the British next card is Lend Lease in the delay box that's a surface fleet. So they may not want to see a sub fleet out there. Their interceptor has already been used though, so they'd have to use a real fleet. Uh, not a fleet, they only have um, two Air Force markers now because they've kind of lost the support unit battle, and I don't think we can afford to stop that. So uh, we're going to keep the Air Forces handy for other operations, and we'll go ahead and um, accept that the British, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Germans are putting a subfleet in the strategic warfare box. Uh, let me see what happens to the U-boat when I do that. Right, since the subs were not contested, the subs themselves are just placed in the used asset box, which is on top of this lamp over here. This is the used asset box. Just in case you wanted to know. All right. So the subs in the, in the strategic warfare box right here. And uh, that was successfully placed. So now what else do the Germans want to do? They've got another sub, which they can go on patrol with. Uh, and I think they might want to try that to continue to hinder operations in the med. Um, 
There's some carriers here in Gibraltar. So we're going to put a sub. I have one last subunit left. And thinking about this, I'm going to look on the... Um, I got another sub coming back in in July. So it's probably worth the risk. We'll go ahead and try to go on patrol in the Western Mediterranean. So as you can see, we've got a sub fleet there. And it's going to go on patrol. Sub patrols, look at the sub patrol chart. And here it is. Sub patrol table, select an X boat from your force pool and place it on the on station box. Boink. Uh, roll in sub patrol table, see if an enemy ship is spotted in that naval zone, right? Okay. Let's try the white die this time. The green die has sucked. And so far, the Germans just can't find a good die, really. The green die has been the best one so far for diplomacy. <laughs> Okay, um, let's check it out. Sub patrol table on a die roll. Let's zoom in here so you can see this action here. Sub patrol table, okay. So here's the roll, and it's a six. I don't think a six is a very good roll. Let's see if you can see the die. Okay, small ship spotted, attack a CA or CD with the lowest speed factor. Okay, so you've got a CA only. So the only thing we can attack is the Dorsetshire, Dorsetshire, Dorsetshire. So sub, getting back over to the sub itself, has an attack of two. Rolls two dice. And here's the rolls. Looking for a six and a one and a two, get nothing. Okay. So, sub patrol was a failure. And we moved it in the naval warfare delay box because it risked itself. All right. Uh, okay. That's it for that. Now, what are the Germans going to do? Well, they need to place a support unit here near Malta. The, the invasion of Malta is happening. So, yeah, we're going to do that next. Let's set that up. Um, the uh, British, let's go ahead and get back over here. So for the Malta invasion right here, I got this. I've got to, really, I need to get a better holder for this. There are holders you can get where they hold it from the bottom of the phone, not the top. So I can't see the middle of my screen, you see. So I have to always double check to make sure that the visibility is in here. That's why you see me waving this thing around so I can catch the edge of it. All right, so here's uh, the situation. We've got the boot of Italy, Malta, and instead of using the surface fleet, uh, due to the fact that the best interceptors that they've got are air, I really need to have an air battle with the British here. In reality, I don't have the best air to place this with. But we're going to give it a try and try to neutralize the um, situation for the British air and then maybe get the subfleet out and then we'll have to have a fleet battle possibly. For that, there's actually no fleet for them to send, though, because I don't have a fleet marker. So if I can neutralize these British air, then I can conceivably place, place it there. The other place I want to put an air marker is going to be over in Alexandria, another dangerous spot. So um, some interesting decisions here to make. The Germans are going to populate the air unit with two air, okay? If they place it, these go in the used asset box. If I don't contest it, um, it's automatically going to be turned over into... Sorry, that's the old game. <laughs> it's not going to be turned into a bridgehead. Uh, we'll be placing a bridgehead marker in the hex. Now, since this is being uh, placed by an air unit, it's going to have the minus two... Plus, sorry, plus two shifts 
Or is it minus two? It should be minus two. It'd be a minus two shift on the attack on Malta. But the British are going to be able to, Germans are going to be able to build an HQ down here. And that's what they're going to do is build a half strength HQ, send these guys in, and uh, do a four to one with uh, basically. Uh, well, it's going to have a minus two shift plus one shift. So it'd probably be a three to one. So I'll have to check that out as an all straight hex side on the. Yeah, on a beachhead minus two straight or beachhead minus two is a plus two to the left. But with the HQ, it'll be a plus two to the right. Um, so I'd have a three to one, which should take Malta. So I have to decide right now as the British, do I want to sacrifice Malta or do I want to try to contest this? If I contest this, I have one more air unit in place. Uh, to defend Great Britain in the upcoming summer if he decides to invade. Now, of course, the British don't know what the Germans have picked, okay? So I would say that they have to be somewhat aggressive for the British to intercept this, uh, given the fact also that, um, you know, they got a plus one from the Strategic Warfare Box as a delayed DRM as well. All right, so uh, the sub-fleet in the strategic warfare box is a problem for them. So tough decision here, probably of all the places that needed to be defended, Gibraltar, Malta, or Alexandria. Alexandria is more important than this. I think we're going to have to let this go. All right, so these two guys then are sent to the used asset box. This is put in the delay box, or maybe it's in the used box, used marker. I'll have to check and see where that gets put. And the beachhead gets put at a minus two, pointing at that hex there. So, uh, I have to think about this. And, yeah, like that. Okay. Okay, so I was right, the Air Force is placed in the used box because it's going to go into the delay box at the end when it gets removed. It doesn't actually get removed until uh, return to base or something. I have to check and see when the used box is then actually depopulated. It makes a difference on when this goes to the delay box is the important thing. Okay, so the beachhead marker has been placed. With this beachhead marker will allow the Germans, or the Axis to do, is move from any land hex adjacent to the beachhead onto the beachhead. However, it can only attack towards the arrow, its point where this arrow on the counter is pointing to, in this case, of course, at Malta. All right, so now uh, the Germans aren't done. Got to use these assets up. So now it's time for the attack on the Middle East. Over here in Alexandria area, we want to place, we've got an air base here now, and we're going to want to place an air unit there so this one guy won't be able to retreat. We want to destroy it. This is a very dangerous situation for the Allies. So there they go. They're going to populate that, and they've got two air, air bases in range. One Rhodes, as I was talking to you about last time, and Tobruk. The British have two of their very best fighters here. So the Germans need to send in some pretty good stuff. Uh, the bomber's good for base attacks. You know, that's one thing you can do as a base attack. I could have sent this bomber in to bomb his air force, possibly, before it could fly. I've got to remember to do these base attacks. It's very important to remember every faction, once a turn, gets to do a base attack. Um, I didn't do it this time. But we'll remember that for next time. So we'll keep the bomber. We'll populate the air unit with this. They will counter with an air unit. Here comes a British Air Force. And you know, the problem is the Germans do have an extra air force. So in some ways, you know, they need to try. Here's, here's a mitigation thing. I can go ahead and just try to use one air force to protect 
myself. However, if I get that, if that gets destroyed and I don't do anything back to him, then um, uh, <laughs> this goes to the delay box and um, his doesn't. That means he still has an extra air unit that's sitting around over here. Um, if I do fight it off, I've used up all the air forces that I've sent down there. And so, uh, which means that the ones I deployed to Malta were kind of wasted, unfortunately. Um, probably should have fought that off, but I didn't. I just uh, didn't have enough assets, really. So... Yeah, the British, four to seven, I can try to destroy them and win it. Um, <laughs> this is a really tough analysis to make. Let me think about it. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and send them all in for an exciting battle. All right. So we're rolling these dice. We need sixes uh, for these uh, results. So I will bring over... The die rolling tray, get it into the action here. So the Germans roll first. So they got a four factor air force on that four factor air force. Let's do that one first. No sixes and a four, three factor air force on a four factor air force. One six, that's a damage. Here's the result, a one. Terrible result, does not do anything to the British Air Forces. So now the British Air Forces fire back, four on the four-factor Air Force. That's a hit. The result is a one, same, same effect, okay. And the other four-factor Air Force on their three-factor Air Force. And there's no sevens there, sixes there either. So, sort of they're flying around in circles. We got a second round of combat now. Round two, this is the final round. Four-factor German Air Force. On their four-factor Air Force, there's one six. Let's do the damage result. A four, that will sink that one. And we'll go to the delay box. That was a good result for the Germans. Three-factor Air Force. Well, it's another six on the gray die. Uh-oh. And the damage on that one is a five. Oh, both of them were sunk. Ooh, well, destroyed, really. They don't get sunk. And now, let's fire back at the Germans. They need to get some damage here, or this is a bad result. So here's the four-factor grits. No effect. And now on the three-factor German Air Force, four shots. And ooh, it turned out to be a disaster for the British, as that was, I believe, a complete success for the Germans here. Let me check it out. So this is treated as a major victory. These both go into the delay box. The Germans go to the used asset box. And um, this goes to the delay box. This gets placed. Um, they don't have to do anything. I could recontest it with the British if I had any air forces, but I don't. So there's nothing I can do. And in this case, this is a significant victory because normally in the old game, this would also go into the delay box and I'd have to place a new air force to replace it. But I do not have to do that now. And I still actually have an asset there. I could put another air force there, but that's probably not going to be necessary. Um... So, uh, yeah, I don't think we will. I'm going to have two, three, four, five, and then six, because I'm going to place a detachment marker here and move this guy up. One, two, three, like that. Okay. So I'm going to have one, two, three, six to two, three to one, four to one on him. Um... It's not looking good for the British in the Middle East or in Malta this turn. Okay, so the Germans now, they still could place... What do they have? Uh, raiders they decided not to do. Troop convoy. They have a scratch troop convoy. 
they're not going to do that. Um, they don't really have a place to, they didn't put an air unit over Malta, so they're not going to use that. They have an air force and a surface fleet. Surface fleet isn't very useful. The air force will be useful um, later. So, yeah, I think we'll keep a hold of that. And now it's just operational movement. Let's do it. Okay. So, oh yeah, supply convoy in the central Mediterranean for the Axis. German convoy is... Sometimes people think you should put yet another unit up in the Norway, not just two units, but three. At the moment, I don't want to put an extra unit up there. Don't think the British are going to try to invade, and they certainly don't probably have the assets to do it anyway. They need a fleet unit. Okay, so let's do the movements. Okay, so the Germans have done their moves. We'll start over here in Malta. Can you see that? It looks like it's on the map, on the camera. Uh, I don't know. Actually, Malta, Alexandria. Okay, so Malta's first. We've got two, three, four. The bridgehead gives them two shifts. I get a shift from the HQ, so that makes it a four to one down to a three to one to take Malta. Now you'll notice there that uh, I've got a multi-step unit in that area, so I'll probably take the step loss on the HQ. If there is one, the three to one is a four. A four is a D1, DR1, one slash one. So yeah, I'll take the step loss on the HQ, which then goes into the delay box. Now I don't have a multi-step unit in there anymore. This goes here, so that's the end of the Maltese uh, garrison. And it goes in the, well, it can't be redeployed yet. And these two German units then land. And Malta has been taken is nice because it's a key port. Now what happens to these two air forces? Let's find out. Well the good news is they have to be rebased to a suitable area, a suitable base, so they could retreat more or less to Port Syed to can try to face off the Germans here. It has to be a suitable base so it's got to have a detachment or an air unit or something in it. And I'll put them in Suez for now. Okay. All right. So that's done. Malta has been taken. And that's really due to the pressure on England. If the Germans weren't trying to go for England and have all those assets up there, the British would have redeployed some stuff down here. So Malta seized. I don't think there's anything the British could have done about that. Uh, except maybe they should now feel I realize they should have contested that air unit because that turned out to be a waste of, of assets, although they did get redeployed down to the Middle East. All right, so here's the 4 to 1. 4 to 1 on Port Said, or I'm sorry, on El Alagelia, whatever it's called. Another 4 has been rolled on the combat chart. 4 to 1. On the four is another step loss. So at least they're causing step losses, and this will have to be an armored step loss. It's going to be harder to get the German armor down here, so we'll take off the uh, Arete Expeditionary Force. This goes into the delay box. This has nowhere to retreat, and it would have been destroyed anyway. And then the Germans get to advance. Let's say the axis get to advance. So there are five steps like that. Okay, and that's destroyed. Okay, so that's it for combat. So now it's going to go to reserve movement. I'll take care of that now. And all the real movement for the Germans occurred down here in Alexandria. You can see they moved to Alexandria that forced the displacement of this fleet. I chose to put it in Port Sayed. Um, I could have moved it 
to another suitable debase as long as it didn't go through more than one off map box, but it seems prudent to try to maintain some force over here. I don't know if that's prudent or not, <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay, um, this then does not have a delay stripe, so it goes back to the British force pool. And that's that. So now you can see there's minimal garrisons here uh, for them to maintain some sort of control. Cairo couldn't fall this uh, particular phase. I could have possibly, if, if there weren't Zox, I could have moved into Cairo, but it's not possible. However, the British aren't likely to send anything down there. And if they even try... They won't be able to do it because Malta has been taken, so they can't stage units there. If they do send some units to the Middle East, which I think they're eventually going to have to do to help protect this area for a while, um, they're going to have to send them down through Kuwait and or the Suez if they can get there fast enough. So we'll see what happens with this, um, with all the pressure at the moment on Britain. It's hard to stop any of this. The good news is Spain still hasn't fallen into the clutches of Hitler. If that happens in the next turn, it could be bad. So anyway, we're ending up the German turn now. We move to, uh, I didn't rebase any air forces. Probably should have, I still could. It's the, it's that time of the year here. Don't have any here, but I got stuff that I've uh, got assets that need to be redone, so um, all of those can come back on the map. Uh, so that's no problem. Um, so, no rebasing of units. Final administration phase, war and peace, we're not declaring war on anybody. Uh, conditional events, none on the card. Minor country conquest, none. Minor country occupation, no, because I don't have a multi-step unit in Italy anymore. And shipyard loss, no. Okay, so we go on to the British turn. All right, as you can see, the British have, in a timely way, uh, selected the lend lease to Britain card. We talked about that earlier. Um, this Churchill Diplomacy is a recurring card, so it goes back in the stack. lend lease to Britain. VP marker is axis tied, yes. So we remove Operation Jupiter. Operation Jupiter has to be removed. Where is it? Did I already remove it? I think I did. Let me check. Yeah, Operation Jupiter's gone. All right, so that's taken care of. Britain is not a pack. Applied neutrals pressured. <laughs> Then roll on the Middle Eastern area table. So I got another neutrals pressure now. So <laughs> I could put another diplomacy marker back on Spain. Um, that seems fitting given the current circumstances. So we'll put this back on here by applying neutrals pressure. The Axis player curses under his breath, which happens a lot for both sides. Since I'm playing both sides, there could be a lot of cursing going on. Right, now we model on the Middle Eastern table with the die roll modifier. And if it's a neutral minor country, the Axis faction can apply free passage to it. So that's an interesting factor. So let's get these dice. Huh. Let's find the dice tray. All right, we've picked the red communist die to roll this on the Middle Eastern table. Now, the DRMs are Axis Tide plus one. Um, there's no European USCSL, European Commitment. US Commitment is not applicable. And there is a country there. Well, let's see. Um, that does, that's not going to affect it. Um, yeah, yeah, that could be interesting. All right, let's see what happens. Middle East... Plus one with a three. Persia. Okay. So Persia has access free passage. So what happens with that free passage is that now Syria 
right here has become an Axis country. So not Syria. Yeah, yeah, Syria. What am I saying? Uh, so, so this uh, is the reserve mobilization marker. So that goes into the Axis force pool. And they'll be able to build that in the subsequent turn. But in the meantime, which they'll need to do, because what they need to do is get Beirut. That's not yet an open port. Uh, because Well, no, it is an open port because this is a country. So they can now transport to that location. Uh, which they'll probably want to do. That's quite handy to have that happen. So um, the British really can't do much about that at the moment. In fact, nothing. But it just points to the fact that they need to really get cracking on the um, Far East because, you know, we've got Cairo, Kuwait, Baghdad here, Kuwait is actually not uh, a strategic hex, but Persia is. So this is a hugely rich area for Axis activities. Okay. All right. So that's done. And now I get a British surface fleet. And then I'll start getting some colonial steps. But not until the conditional phase. Okay, so we'll see if that arrives in the nick of time in the delay box. I've got the British fleet. Fortunately, there is a sub-fleet in there, so that'll have a plus one, but still, hopefully I can get those guys back in a reasonable amount of time. Um, it's a dangerous situation for the Brits. Okay, so this has been played. The conditional events shows that they will get some uh, minor... Colonials, they've got a Canadian and a French in here, so the French unit can be built in a British city, West Africa, or U.S. Canadian box. So West Africa might be a good place for this to show up, as I need to keep transporting that around. Uh, the Canadian can only show up in the Canadian box. So that's not that bad, but... Okay. Right, so what am I going to pick as the Brits? Well... Can't pick Commonwealth support yet. Oh, wait a second. Operation Jupiter. Move 18B. Oh, uh, neutral minor country. Free passage. Surface fleet. Okay. So now there's no Pacific commitment. But I think there's a car that gives me Pacific commitment. Uh... U.S. Posters, War, Total War, or Total War Pacific. No. Uh, no. Close range support. Just looking at all the stuff here. Uh, let me check this out. Unfortunately, the only logical choices for the British for a card selection are military aid, which gets you colonial units, but I'll have all the colonial units I can get at the moment. Um, so I'll put Churchill Diplomacy in for the next one. That's the other logical option. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of colonials that aren't coming in. Uh, I, don't, I can't play the Commonwealth card yet. Uh, Poland hasn't fallen. Spain hasn't, Sweden hasn't, nor has Turkey, nor has Italy. So the only one I have is France. So, yep, that's the choice. Seems pretty lame. Okay, so Churchill Diplomacy is the card picked for now. Okay, so I've got... For support segment, all I really have is an Air Force. I'm not going to want to play it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and move into support segment and movement. And really, there's very little the British can do. they got to keep all their stuff in Britain, so their things moving out of there. Uh, their fleets don't want to do any raids uh, 
on those fleets anymore. There's no point. Uh, it's a little bit too dangerous. I already lost my Force H last time I tried that. And uh, I don't even have a support unit to do it with anyway. So, no air raids. I could do an air raid on one of their units in the Far East, but I think I better just hold off on that. Okay, so no air raids, nothing really, just the conditional step coming in. They'll bring in the French step in West Africa. And then the other plethora of allied conditional events. You need to remind yourself to always look at these. Conquest of a Western Minor, a country reactivation. No, uh, no liberation of any Axis or Soviet. Finest hour repairs threatened already done. Reduced U.S. impact. No, France rises. No, all the French uh, cities are occupied. In France, uh, lend lease to France, nope. France is no longer on the map. Internment, Mediterranean fleet release, that was done a long time ago. Shipyard laws. Okay, that's it. So, I should probably look up shipyard loss and see what that means. Hang on. Right, shipyard loss. This is a new permanent conditional event that applies to all factions. If all of a country's home ports are under enemy control, um, everything else is removed from play. Okay. Uh, so, it's just basically all ports in Britain, not the off-map boxes. Okay. Right. So that's what that is. Speaking of which, I think I forgot to advance the turn marker here. And oh, I got some more ships. Yeah, the uh, British got some decent ships. The Queen Elizabeth, King George, and the London. They'll put them, them there. Also, I've realized that there's no point in keeping these units in the off-map boxes because they don't help with interception. So I'm going to remove them from the West Africa box. Uh, to there. They don't help with the raids, I don't think. Maybe they do, but uh, I'm going to move them back into port. So let's get a couple of these. Yeah, we'll get some more fast ships there in the Mediterranean. And these guys up here with Allied Fleet 1. Okay. Allied Fleet 1. Okay, there we go. So... That's really it for the Brits. Shipyard loss, conditional that they have to lose all the ports in their home country, and then they lose all the ships that are in dry dock, basically, on the map. That's probably not going to matter too much, as we're almost done with all of those ships coming in. Nearly done. Got another year or so. So now we're on to the Soviets' turn. The Soviets, they did Zukov takes command last time. Uh, in order that they could play this in time for the summer peace offer. So this goes to the discard pile, the played pile. Really should keep the discards and played separate. Uh, I always forget to do that uh, when I'm playing the real game. Anyway, cards 15, Zukov takes command, was played. If Russia is not a pack, but it is... So we do not apply any of this stuff. And three replacement steps for the Russians. One, two, and a calf. And another calf, I guess. Put that in Moscow. A couple of these. What do they got there? We'll do another one there so they can build another one in Kiev. And uh, where else do they want one? Probably Rostov, just to garrison some of these important cities. Now, they need another one up in Leningrad. There we go. Okay. So there's the Soviets brought on their reinforcements. They don't have any miners, so they can't do that. Um, what else can they do? Pretty much. That's everything. So then we go to political events. Uh, the Soviets. 
Oh yeah, I should roll. The British get to roll for a ship rebuild. They fail, and the Soviets also do. They fail as well. Okay, so no new ships are built at the beginning of the phase. All right, so peace offer. All right, so I have to roll political events segment for the Russians. So they pick a die, and uh, it's going to be plus one due to the uh, Axis tied in that event. But before I do that, I have to pick another card. So, hmm. Uh, we've got a situation here where um, they're not going to be able to play any of the yellow cards unless... That's, those are the, sorry, those are the Axis cards. Get these cards here. Um, so, what can they play? Well, demand Turkish Frontier, Ultimatum, Bessarabia is a possibility. Um, intervention, War Production, Surrender. Uh, why don't they have the... Oh, they could still demand Eastern Poland. Probably don't want to do that. Molotov diplomacy could be done. Um, forces for the Far East. That's not useful because there's no war marker over there. Uh, general mobilization. I could do the general mobilization and bring in um, some steps. But, you know, right now... Just doesn't look like Barbarossa is going to happen next turn, so I'm not going to do that. Ultimatum. Yeah, I want to hold on to that in case I need to declare war. And if I do declare war, I'll have to remove the general mobilization. So, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, further demands, intervention, limited war production. Um and surrender. Can't play the red cards. I think the best is to demand Bessarabia. We need more HQs out there. So we'll do that. I played the political purges card. So that's what they're going to do next turn. And that's it. Okay. Now they roll on this peace offer card. I rolled a six. Roll on the guarantee table. So here we go. Guarantee table. Let's get the Soviet card out. Doesn't matter, all these charts are the same, but just for verisimilitude. Okay, we go roll on the. Yeah, the result is a six. Roll on the guarantee table. Rolling on the guarantee table. I rolled a two. Minor country politics, 19.26. Okay, so I have to pick an area table, and when I roll, if it's a neutral country, the Germans will have some options. So which area do I want to roll in? Well, um, I could roll in the north and try to neutralize that area. I don't know. The Balkans is usually more of a flashpoint. It might yield some interesting results. Or the Middle East uh, as well. That might help out over here, if uh, we gotta watch out getting Turkey into the war. Um, probably the safest place where I could avoid messing things up is the Balkans. So we'll roll in the Balkans. The Russians roll a three for the Balkans, which is Romania. So now that Romania has been picked, uh, the action the Axis faction may treat this as a no result or select it and roll on the incident table. Hmm. Okay. Well, shall we select it and roll on the incident table? Of course. Of course we will. This is how we play Axis Empires. We don't know what could happen. 
The Germans need some luck for a change. We're going to roll and add one to this. It's a four. Free passage. Free passage. 1915. Okay. Well, that's... Okay. Well, it's activated as a friendly minor country, but place a freeze passage marker on it instead of a mobilizing marker and do not perform a mobilization roll. Okay. So that's interesting. So they, they come in sort of halfway militarized in favor of the Axis. We'll set that up now and show you the result. Okay, so the Romanians have been set up. They are now an active Axis miner, so that blew up in their faces. Maybe they shouldn't have rolled for the Balkans, but I don't know. If I had rolled a three, for example, elsewhere, like in the Middle East, uh, that would have been Persia. If I had rolled it in the central area, Czechoslovakia, so no effect. I probably should have, could have rolled it there, but then Poland was, I didn't want to risk Poland. The northern area would have been the Baltic states. That would have been okay. Western area, France or Vichy would have activated for the Germans. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so uh, it wasn't going to be Turkey, at least. So yeah, of all the results, that was probably the worst one by picking the Balkans. So, but the Germans needed a break. They've been having some bad luck with this stuff. All right, so there's the free passage. Now the Russians then, um, yeah, they just start moving around and rebuilding. I'll take care of all that. One thing I should point out is that this uh, failure here means they won't be able to obtain the Bessarabian hexes with their demand of Bessarabia, although they will get out the HQ, which is what they really needed. So definitely more of a setback for the Soviets than at first glance. So looking at the Soviet permanent conditional events, uh, they have no card conditional events. So we've got those actually come after these. Uh, Soviet minor country activation, no. Uh, liberation of countries, no. No emergency, mo mo emergency mobilization because uh, it's not total war yet and the other criteria are not met. Border defense check, the Germans check that. Everything looks copacetic. Russia rises, no. Lend lease to Russia, not at the moment. Internment and shipyard loss. Okay, that's it. So now we do the delay rolls. The infamous delay rolls are now done. Let's start with the axis here. We've got three units, yellow, blue, and gray. Yellow, so, so it's really uh, gray, blue, yellow, all at minus one. Gray, and this turned out to be a net, so that was a, a six. Uh, this is also a six. Oh, they rolled terribly. Then that comes in. So these are two are at five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So they're not there for the summer at all. And then this is three. One, two, three. Not the best rule for the Germans there, I'd say. Now we do the plus ones here, because we've got the subfleet over here in the strategic warfare box. All right, all of these come out. Oh, we've got one more in the naval warfare the box here. The U-boat rolls a three, so it comes back in two turns. There we are. Um, okay, now these. So we've got, uh, we got one, two, three, four, so we'll do blue. Black, white, and red. Blue, black, white, and red. Blue, black, white, red. Blue, black, white, and red. Not too bad, but the surface fleet, ooh, that's pretty sad, actually. Seven for that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, way. Not till the end of the year, the Lend-Lease 
I guess all those 50 destroyers the Americans sent were all in bad shape. Three turns for the Air Force. Middle of summer, not too bad. This comes back in three turns to repopulate that and four turns for that. So, hmm, somewhat questionable. But now we have the return of assets also. So all the German stuff comes back in here. Uh, they're gonna look, so they get a U-boat back for another ship. And we've got, might be appropriate, I've got these raiders here. I think I want, got a raider down there. These bombers aren't the greatest. And let's put another one that's in Amsterdam, so we'll put it in, I guess it can come to any suitable base. So, Brussels, these here, the British just don't have any air assets that they can deploy down there. Well, they already have two, so I better put some good German ones down here. Four and three. And they can go, I don't actually, oh. Yeah, I can put them actually in Alexandria. So put them there to try to take them on. And I got one more left um, here. We'll put it, hmm, I don't know where I might need this. Try to keep them honest here. We'll put one in uh, the Hav. Okay, there's where I put the German assets. Okay. I um, have to see when this sub comes out of the warfare box and what happens to this now I think it goes into the delay box at the beginning of next turn hey hi folks definitely running late on this video wasn't able to actually do anything in the weekend there's just too much stuff going on so here we are though getting ready to deploy you can see the delay box units coming in so the CV fleet's coming back in for the Western Allies, that's really pretty important. Although it's going to be too late for Malta, it will help them defend against any invasion. One air unit for the Soviets. Let's put that over there someplace. Doesn't really matter too much. Italian war economy is in. That's nice. And they also have a sub, which will probably go on a sub patrol. So one thing I realized in the early playing here is that it's definitely worth doing an air raid every turn because an air raid or some kind of raid because um, I think that's every seasonal turn and go ahead and uh, put out the um, subs as much as you can uh, because those things are something you can do to devastate the enemy with your SK Schiffskrieg units. Okay, so the way that works is that you can do one base attack during each support segment. Uh, and you can do one sub patrol, or actually I think as many sub patrols as you want. Uh, and then during the seasonal turn, the commerce raids can be done by the Axis. It looks like that's only available on the seasonal turns. Okay, so to clarify that, commerce raids once a seasonal turn. Base attacks one per turn on each map. Sub patrols as many as you have subs for every support phase. So that's what we need to remember. Okay, so getting on with the Germans here. Um, sorry if you hear that um, construction work outside. The lawn guy is out there doing some kind of... Looks like he's cutting down some vines or something with his chainsaw. Anyway, sorry about that. Okay, so we got the treaty card. So we're skipping into the next turn starting with the political events segment in the initial administrative phase. So we start with the political events, then support, then organization. 
So let's get started with this. Okay, so here's the treaty. So Germans have been unlucky with the treaty. And you might recall last time they were able to get Romania into the war due to some bad results for the Russians. So that's really nice for them. Um, and now they might want to just get a success by going for Hungary here. Hungary's got, and this will connect Romania with them. So if you can see this, yeah, it looks like you should be able to see that. Uh, axis influence, that's going to get a plus one. They're going to have a plus two on this, giving them a pretty good chance. And then they'll go after Spain. Then they can choose later. Do they want to go after Barbarossa after all? And hook around, try to pick up Bulgaria, Hungary, or even Turkey. Um, if they do play in the summer, which they do plan to play in the summer, the next card, the special New World Order card. So, let's do this treaty roll. Here we go. Plus two to this. Oh, man, the Germans better randomly select a die. They, they're getting superstitious around here. They can get uh, Himmler. Himmler was the superstitious one. Get that idiot to pick the die. He picked the British yellow die. Let's see. Three, four, five. Wow. So had they rolled that against Spain, it would have been a three, which would have been no result. So they made the right decision. Well done, superstitious lads. So now we will deploy... Uh, Hungary, which has entered the war on the Axis side. All right, so the Germans in the last month or two have picked up three new allies. Syria is now theirs. They've also got uh, Hungary, which they just rolled for, and Romania as a result of Soviet mismachinations, we might say. Right, so now we'll do the support phase. And we've got some sub patrols. Let's see, I've got, uh, let's see, I've got one sub, one Italian sub. I think they'll try in the Mediterranean. I've got a German sub, but I need to decide if I want to deploy it. I think I do, because i got another sub coming in next turn. And then I'm not sure when the U-boat comes back. Uh... Probably should stack these up so they're not all mixed together. Where's the, oh, the U-boat, we don't know when it's coming back because it's in the delay box just now. There was a U-boat in the strategic warfare box. That's gone now. And there was a um, airplane in the Western Mediterranean box. Those are both now in the delay box for the Germans and the Axis. So they're probably free to go ahead and deploy this. They'll put one in the Western Mediterranean. So we'll start with the Italian frog boat marker sitting in the Eastern Mediterranean. It's going to go skulking around. Go ahead and roll on the uh, sub patrol table. Let's see what they find out. On the sub patrol table. Yeah, we got to flip around here to find it. Axis commerce raids, base attack, sub patrol. Here we go. So, let's see. Can you see this? I know he's got to constantly make sure things are visible. Yes. So it's attacking this fleet here. Let's see what it finds. The roll is a one. Ooh. Carrier spotted. Attack any one carrier. So in the Allied Fourth Fleet, there is the Glorious, one of their best CVs, is there. We have a one die roll to see what happens. But the U-boats, the M-boats were discovered. No luck. They go to the Naval Warfare Delay Box. Okay. Nice try, boys. Now we have the German subs here. 
checking. Well, they sit in the, they do it in the Western Mediterranean, but those are where the targets are located. So the Germans, using the black die, they rolled a two, carrier spotted, attack a carrier with the lowest speed factor. And these guys need to stop sending those carriers out on missions. So we've got the Eagle, the Victorious, and the Hermes. Um, yeah, we'll go for the Hermes. See if we can attack it. Now I get two dice with the Germans. Better submarines. Five is the disabled result. They were able to disable the Hermes and it goes to the Naval Warfare Delay Box along with the U-boat. And there's your sub patrols, everybody. Okay. Now, air raids. So air raids are useful to, or ship raids. Uh, shit, yeah, really, you don't use do ship raids unless you have a carrier. The, the Germans do have a carrier, but um, might be more interesting. One, two, three, four. Going back to the Middle East here, okay, um, you can see they have this in Tobruk. It can do an air raid to try to take out some of these guys in Suez. So during the air raid segment, they'll give that a try. Do they want to do that? Because they might need... No, they got plenty of air sitting everywhere anyway to fight the British, so um, an air raid. Base attack table is what it's called. Uh, okay. Let's see. The raid task force may include either ships or one heavy LVA, but not both. Okay, so one heavy LVA, that's the, that one right here, okay. They have to form a task force with it, all right. Um, let's see. All right. So we're going to do the radar right here, see if they can do something. We just uh, now committed, they have to have a Air Force in their support pool box to do this. They do have one Air Force there. So the danger of course is if they roll poorly, and I won't say what that die roll is because they don't want to do that. Let's see if they can do the base attacks. Here's the roll, it's a five. Target is away, no result, so nothing happens, okay? Um, let's see. So let's see what happens to the German air unit that never succeeded. So the German uh, air unit, which had to have been based within nine hexes and follow an air unit path, important to point, point that out in the desert, okay? Uh, the weather was storms, and I think I think I failed to notice that. Uh, there cannot be mud in the area because they can't trace through a mud hex, but I don't think storms are considered to be mud, but let me just double check that. Yeah, air unit paths are only affected by mud, not by storms. So this is put in the used asset box. On top of the lamp over here. There it is, the used asset is shown, thusly. Okay, so we're now moving on to, that's all the base raids and sub patrols and all that stuff. So we move into the rest of the support segment placement. Let's see if there's anything else the Germans wanna do. Focusing here on the cross channel invasion area. The Germans thought briefly of contesting this might have been an interesting idea. They've got uh, basically 
two axis support units that can do this. Um, could be a, quite a contentious battle out here. However, they don't have any follow-up units. They do have two possible air forces that could come in on a one or a two to sustain any beachhead. They're really not in a position to attack effectively Southampton because the, the Marine unit had been waiting to go down here. You can see the Marine unit is in Bordeaux. So it will be useful, though, to remove the Marine unit back up to threaten to be part of that invasion again. So let's uh, consider that. Uh, where would they want to go with the Marine unit? Um, they just don't have any key ports. The only key port they could use to put uh, something out here is uh, <laughs> Gibraltar. They're not anywhere near Gibraltar. I was thinking the Marine unit could come out into the Atlantic Ocean then landed Liverpool or something like that, move over to Edinburgh, that would be nasty, but it's not going to happen until Gibraltar can be suppressed. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the difficulty here, as always for the Germans, is securing this, and they do now at this point have to deal with this air unit that's there. Not so much the air unit, but as the HQ is there in London, that makes it a much harder proposition to invade Southampton by itself. So the invasion is going to have to probably, you know, ideally place it uh, and start crossing over, but I need plenty of support units to do that. And I'm not really in a position to start that invasion now, especially in the mud so I think I'll pass because in the mud, I can't even place an air unit out there. So it's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, I think I can place it to make a bridgehead or a beachhead, but I don't think I can place it because um, I can, you know, I can put it from the air base directly out to sea, but I can't uh, use it for any combat shifts. And really what you need to do is put couple of air around here plus be able to have the bridgehead it's just not feasible at this time for the Germans to try it so they're not going to try anything and they don't need the support units anywhere else and they do have the Italian fleet the Italian fleet what do I want to do with them do I want to bring them out as an escort convoy that might be useful because I need a supply convoy and use them as an escort convoy, they can then send some more troops over. That might be really useful. Uh, I think that's a good idea to use them for that, as they really, at this point, can't be intercepted in the Central Med. Central Med no longer has any British bases to do anything about that. So, I'm going to place it here. Hopefully you can see all of this. You have to place it here and use it as an escort convoy. So you put it in and flip it. And now it is an escort troop convoy along with a supply convoy. That's what I was trying to think I could do up there near Norway, but I wasn't in that position. So there's no interception available for the British on this. And so they can start sending troops over. This will use up the fleet and it'll be put in the delay box, but I think that's the best use of it right now. Okay, so operational movement. All right, so I've done all the moves here for the operational movement phase. And I'm going to take a three to one attack on the, yeah, they're gonna do a three to one attack on this fleet here. Not on the fleet itself, but on uh, Port Syed. To they would prefer to do it on Suez, but they really can't get the troops there in time. There's a river to cross; they can't get across the Nile, and they don't want to use the armored unit. So uh, three to one on that hex. Uh, 
with a four. That sounds like a loss for both sides. Uh, dr one one slash one. Yeah. So one of these Italians is flipped. Flip one of those guys, and this is removed to the force pool, but they probably will never build it back up. These guys can advance in. I shipped over a German unit using the escort troop convoy. Moved another German unit to Toronto. It was in Sicily, and it's going to join them in the reserve movement phase up here. Did a little shuffling around. I did send the Austrian mountain unit into Hungary here and shifted these around because I'm going to... I flipped one of them over so I could move something into Italy and I moved the Marine back over here so it could engage. This is the only place it really can cross. I'm not so sure I'll ever do that, but um, it's the only place it can really cross to help out. Um, it could also engage in, you know, if we can get a bridgehead here, because we'd have to have two bridgeheads. It's really hard, actually, to use this Marine. I didn't anticipate that. The problem with using the Marine is then you have to, if, unless you can get a fleet bridgehead up here, I'm pointing at the North Atlantic, a fleet will let you stack up to six X's. But an air unit bridgehead will only let you stack up to, uh, not six X's, but six points. Uh, air bridgehead, only three points. If the Marine is one of those points. It's only going to give you five factors, and that defeats the purpose of its extra shift in some ways. So it can be hard, really, to find a good way to use it. Crossing over to Dover is something it could do, but... You know, unless it can get a 1 to 3. Now, it could get a 1 to 3 and soak off on London. That's a possibility. So Dover is a good place for them to threaten that. And ideally, the British might want to put a unit there to prevent that from happening. Either that or add an additional unit to London. So there's some considerations for the Marine unit here, which is, seems like the most logical place to put it. Okay, so... We've done the attack. Let's do the reserve movement phase. Okay, so one thing I had to do was redeploy the British fleet that had been in Port Said. I debated on, you know, where I can put this. I decided to put it in Beirut to keep some kind of presence there. Uh, well, actually, they can't go to Beirut, isn't that? That's part of Syria now. So the only place they have left to put this fleet is Famagusta, and that looks dangerous. I'd hate to have it completely destroyed. Um, I think what we'll do is just we'll move the whole kit and caboodle over to Gibraltar in the displacement, and then all of Gibraltar's this huge fleet here, probably more than they need. There we go. It's even bigger than the fleet in the in the England area, so they probably better boost that up to make that a little bit bigger. Okay. So that's that reserve movement phase. Did a few movements here, but basically uh, just sent another German over. I got two Germans in Alexandria now. Um, that was about it. I suppose I should look at redeploying air, but um, I think I have the right air where I want it right now. So, um, yeah, I don't have any air to cover the Western Mediterranean at this point. That's the only place where I'm lacking a German air. Just parity up here. He's got one in England. He's got three air LBAs, air fleets, let's call them. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. Got more than I need. Maybe I should put one small air unit in Palermo or something. Actually, an air base here. Naples would be a good place where I can populate an air. It doesn't have to be in Naples. 
is to be within 9 of a Naples. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, Vienna. Let's just put it in Vienna for now. That'll let me populate an air unit in Yugoslavia if necessary. It's a good central location. I was looking at Zagreb, Vienna. Vienna, Zagreb. These are all like 9 to there, 9 to there, 9 to there. This is a good central location for German air units. I don't know if that was historically where they based them. I think I might have mentioned this before. Okay, that's it for the Axis. It'll be on to the Allies' turn. Oh, right, the marker removal phase. The markers come off for Budapest. They come off for Bucharest and for Syria. So, now the thing is, if the British had any mobile units, they could conquer Syria, but the bad news is they don't have any. So, the Germans are probably going to get up in there first. One, two, one, two, one, two, and get the armored unit up to Damascus and into Iraq as well. I think they'd have to declare war on Iraq to do that, though. All right, so we're not going to do that yet. Okay, so that's it for the Axis. Okay, as for the Brits, they don't have much to do. Uh, no political segment this time. However, in the sports segment, if they have an air unit, which they do, they can do an air raid. Maybe they can take out some of these Axis air that are in Alexandria here. If they can get lucky enough, bomb it from this location to here. All right, so we'll maybe give that a try. A bit risky, though. There's a chance I could lose my air unit being used to populate that. So since it's risky, I better roll a risk roll. The British, let's say five or six, they'll do it. They rolled a three. Now they're going to hold off. They don't want to risk using that air unit for that. Okay, so no air raids, support units. Um, they're not going to put anything out. They need it for the defense of England. So not much they're doing. Let's just uh, see what they can fuss around with. They do have the West African French unit. It can travel to the Middle East box, which is here. And you can see I put a troop convoy. Can you see this? Probably not. So they're in the Middle East box, and I've got a troop convoy here in the Arabian Sea. This will allow that to transport to there. I've got to start building up my defenses in this area. Okay. So, Yes, Syria, neutral country. Now it's an Axis country. Transjordan, to dependent. Iraq is not. It's an independent country, just like Persia is. That's why this flag is supposed to be there. Okay. So I don't think there's any other moves for them to make. They're going to adjust their fleets a little bit. Because they have too many now sitting in Gibraltar. Okay, so all the British did was they moved their French unit over here and then in the reserve movement phase they can move it to kuwait they brought in a uh, italian unit not an italian unit canadian unit up in <laughs> canada yeah they'd like to have some italians up there so yeah regular movement phase and then a reserve movement phase to kuwait helping defend that um here that's about all they can do in the Middle East. And they'll bring the Canadian over uh, when the next turn happens. So that's it. Let's move on to the Russians. What do the Russians have? Now the Russians have this peace offer card, which they still have to roll on. So looking at that, flipping that over here, they got the peace offer card. It's a plus one, minus one due to the, no, sorry, excuse me, just plus one due to the German Axis Tide, which, by the way, they now have four cities. Uh, they've got, um, as you know, Paris. They're occupying Brussels, that's two. They've got 
Oslo, that's three. And now they've got Cairo, that's four. So they're looking for two more. One can be found in Athens, and one can be found in Iraq. So that pressure um, is probably going to be the most logical place for them to get to six easily. And maybe if they could get lucky by the end of summer next year, they'll be able to get up to nine by taking three Russian ones. So, wow, pretty interesting situation. Okay, so the Russians then, peace offer card. Let's roll it. Plus one. They roll a six. Guarantee table. I don't think you actually want to move to these tables. Guarantee table. Here we go. Plus one. It's a three conflicting plans. So that ends the peace offer situation. And that is basically it. Okay. There are no, let's just check the allied, uh, let's see, the, always have to check these conditional events. Conquer, no, nope, Russia, no, nope. border check, Russia rises, none of those are appropriate. Actually, you memorize these. It's just been years since I've played, so. Uh, okay, so permanent conditional events for the Western allies. Conquered Western minor country activation, no. Liberation, no. Uh, none of those apply. France rises, no. No lend lease to France. Okay, so none of those apply. So that's it. We're into the next turn after these delay rolls are done. So we see a heavy dose of delay rolling here for the Germans and Axis. Let's start with these, okay? So we'll go yellow, white, and gray for these. These are all minus one uh, for the delay modifiers. Uh, Axis tied VP marker. Uh, that's the only, there's no pluses. Intensive bombing, nope, 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 okay. So yellow, white, gray. Yellow is a two. They brought this off as a detachment from Tobruk because they didn't need it anymore. So it comes in in two turns. White is one turn. That's the Hungarian Expeditionary Force. Nice. Uh, and three turns for the sub. One, two, three. End of summer comes in. And now we have the two air forces. A little more critical. They're both the same. Minus ones. Let's see what happens. Do do. Not great. Four turns. One doesn't come in until August, September, and one doesn't come in till the end of summer. So that's good news for the British. If they were worried about some kind of invasion of England, it's probably not going to happen now. Or they just don't have the sustained firepower they would need to really press on to England. All right. So we've got these three now. Uh, we got the Italian one. This is in the Naval Warfare Delay Box. Both of these are. Okay. And then the Hermes that was damaged by the sub is also there. So we'll do yellow and white for these. Yellow. It's in already. One of those frogmen. They really want to get in on the action. And this sub is four turns. One, two, three, four. So it depleted itself. Let's see what happens to the British Hermes. Oh no, rolled a six. He's got to roll again. So six plus five. Wow, 11 turns. Yeah, that was a hell of a disablement, wasn't it? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. It's out for more than a year. So much for the Hermes. Luckily, it wasn't a really important carrier that got disabled. That's it. So now at the end of the turn, we bring back on the German air unit. I think we may indeed... Where do we want this? You know, I guess they can bring it back in at Port Syed now. That's a legitimate port for it so that's a good place for it we'll put it there 
keep up the pressure on the British here by having enough air in the med. Okay, uh, then we also bring in these units uh, for May and June. Fallschirmjäger is back, one more sub is back, just to annoy the British again. Fallschirmjäger, they probably will want to build that as a threat for the invasion of England. And the Hungarian, a very nice unit, might bring that in under my minor ally as I bring in a regular Italian with the uh, Italian war economy, which is now here in the strategic warfare box. So we're ready to start the summer of 1940. And since it's not going to be an attack this year, the Germans are going to be doing this uh, New World Order. Um, this might be the first time. We're going to probably do a commerce raid this time in order to see what we can get out of that. In a commerce raid, what are the possible outcomes? Well, what happens is you have to fight some kind of a strange naval battle. And then a successful commerce raid, if it makes it out there, force the Western faction to select a convoy and put it in the naval warfare delay box. That's important, especially if they're trying to get units to the Middle East. So I think it's worth it to try that. Or I can select one British or U.S. support unit from the force pool, another huge one. Um, or I can put the raid marker in the strategic warfare box and it can be either Western Delay. So that's a, a Western Delay role. Um, I think that's not actually shown on this chart, uh, but I think that uh, it actually is an SK thing they didn't put on the map, but I think it gives the Western Allies an extra delay role on top of what they have which can be useful if they're trying to bring in a lot of stuff, um, especially later on in the war. So uh, when the U.S. is in or big stuff is starting to come in, of course, then it's a lot harder to succeed with the commerce raid. But anyway, okay, that's the preamble to the summer of 1941. Okay, so here we go with May, June of 1941. And... Um, so obviously I'm geometrically challenged. Something's happened to my IQ. I had to just flip the holder around. The camera is way off on the side of this thing. Now I can see the whole screen when I'm filming. Doe, all right. Anyway, so they're discarding the new world order. And we bring in the treaty card. No, sorry, excuse me. They're discarding the treaty card. This is the card that was just used somewhat successfully. Really can thank the Soviets a little bit more than them for that. So here we go. So we have to remove the anti-common turn pact and I get two replacement steps, which is going to be the airborne unit that just came back in. I'll put that here, up there in where did I put it? You can see that on the map. Bremen here. Okay. So anti common Crusade is now toast. And I think we have to pick a card next. This will be a good time probably for the Germans. They need to Probably they'll need to clear out someplace, either Yugoslavia or Hungary or something like that. Um, more and more leaning towards away from the invasion of England now, towards Barbarossa, although I might give one last shot at Spain since I have three chances with New World Order in the summer to roll on the political event segment. Um, so we'll see what happens. So yeah, we'll pick Operation Marita so I can declare war on a country or even roll on the diplomatic incident table if I want. I could use that maybe 
to get Poland on my side. There's things you can do with this card that don't always involve an attack. You can still use that Blitz card. You see, you do get a Blitz symbol here. You get a Blitz marker. All right. So that's their picks. So uh, now we're going to try to do a commerce raid to see if we can take out some troop convoys. So let's set that up. Okay, so during the first step of the commerce raid, the Germans pick any two ships. Um, this time I'm not going to pick my battleships because I really might need them for a bigger battle in Great Britain. So we're just going to use these cruisers uh, to try to do this. So... I can pick any two ships in a North Sea zone, which is where they've been based all this time. In Hamburg, actually not Bremen. Bremen's here, but they've been based in Hamburg. Okay, that's where the German fleet is. Bremen is here. They're not using Bremen for this. Okay. So, what are we doing here? Well, make a speed roll for each raider. If it's successful... Place it on the on station box. All right, so let's do that. We've got the Hipper, which is a six speed, and the Graspe, which is a five speed. So Graspe is the blue die. <laughs> the Graspe did not make it. Okay, well, the Hipper did, and the Graspe. Not really sure what happens to that. Maybe it goes in the used asset box. Not sure. Put it in the used box there. Okay. Um, all right. Then the Western faction may attempt to intercept with friendly ships based in port hexes or off map boxes adjacent to the naval zone of placement. So that's why I did put some ships out here you can do the interception from the off map box even though it says limited range on here and this is one of the things that was aggravating me before limited range you're not allowed to leave the off map box to intercept however you are allowed to do that if you're doing an interception of surface rates so my whole point is this limited range should be defined in the rule book and we shouldn't have to try to figure out what the hell they meant by plastering it all over the map and then not actually putting the words limited range in the rule book. Do you hear me, Thomas? All right. I'm not going to go on with that rant anymore. Let's see here. So, well, I took those ships out because I didn't think they could do it. But actually, now that I reckon they can. So the only places that I can try to intercept this roll are from Scapa Flow. And from Gibraltar. Okay. Ships based in the same port or off map box may attempt a combined interception. Okay. Roll one die on the interception table. Okay. So I've got to interpret this interception table. Give me a moment. Oh, this is quite interesting. If you look at the interception table, there's a minus one DRM if intercepting from an off-map box. Okay. So it really does behoove me to put some stuff in the off-map boxes, which I didn't do. Okay. So... I think ships based in the same port or off map box may attempt a combined interception. Okay. So I think I can pick several ships. That's what it's trying to say. Um, okay. If I roll speed, off station if it's in the off station oh, i see okay 
Uh, so really, if I can only intercept if I get a one result. That's terrible. Okay, so I'll pick... Um, really don't care what I do. I don't want to roll a failure, though. Because uh, then they go into the naval warfare delay box. So you don't want to send out too much from the British fleets by rolling failures. So from the first fleet up in Scapa Flow, we will simply send the Suffolk and the London out. Their speed fives. All right. Um, in fact, yeah, just, yeah, we want to get it with two. And then from the other fleet, the Norfolk, these are faster ships, the Norfolk and the Dorsetshire. So these guys, I'll try to intercept from here. I think I'm really going to have to read this rule a little more carefully, but for now we're just going to blitz our way through. So zooming in on the action here, we try to intercept the, let's pick a red die and a yellow die. Yellow die, looking for ones, red die, yellow and red die. And the red die does intercept, but they roll a six um, on the interception table. So they're a failure, so they go, okay. Place all the ships in the group in the delay box, not the naval warfare delay box. Okay, so these two ships have been put in the delay box. These two ships have interception. So, and we play on the battle board to fight this out. Okay, let's do this. So it's going to be a night action. Um, British have this card caught at close range. You can attack up to two enemy carriers. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to waste this on this battle. I need that for later. Okay, so the attackers, I guess, are the British. Um, they'll come in. They each have one die shooting. Let's see, the Dorsetshire is the gray die. Let's get the dice in there. The gray die. Oh, look at that. They pummeled the Admiral Hipper. So it's definitely going to be sunk because it's just two damage points will sink it. Um, one damage point would uh, flip it over, but I already took two damage just by getting hit twice by a boxcar's roll. Does the Hipper avenge itself before it goes blub, 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 blub? It does not even come close. So. Superior British gunnery from the fleet in the North Atlantic. And I think, I'm not so sure, I think. Uh, uh, I don't know, I think they might be placed in the used box. I'll check this out later. It's not going to be critical this turn. Hipper, goodbye. All right, well, that wasn't exactly what we were hoping for. Now we can do at least one raid, and uh, I think we'll do our raid at Port Syed again. I'm going to take the bombers here at Port Said. They're going to bomb the Allied bombers. Just because it seems to make sense to do a raid every chance you have a chance. So they're doing the raid. Uh, they have an area in the box. So we now go to the raid chart. Base attack, really. Base attack table. So we don't have a sustained base attack here. Or Operation Z. So we just roll plainly on here. How many air raids do we get? A four. Target away. No result. So the planes were not sitting around on the base. They were out practicing or whatever they were doing. So, no problem there. And this goes into the used asset box. That's fine. We're not worried about that. Okay. 
We now move on to, that's the end of the turn stuff. So we now go on to the New World Order political events segment. This is where we are going to try to get a treaty. So we've got to select a treaty minor country. And I think I mentioned that we're going to go for Bulgaria here. Because that gives me access to both Greece and a victory hex. It also gives me access to Turkey if I want to head that way and really can dominate the Middle East by having Turkey on my side. And this will also give me a flanking maneuver against the Russians, which they will not like. So, Bulgaria it is. Randomly pick. We haven't had very much luck with this. It's still a plus one because that's the score right now. Axis tied plus one with four victory points of victory locations. All right, so here we are, adding one to the die and a four. We got a neutrals pressured. Hmm, let's figure out what we want to do with that. Well, interestingly, that brings us back to the politics here. I can use that to give myself an improved chance again versus Spain by pulling off their neutrality marker here. So that might not be a bad idea. It's not a neutrality marker, but it's a Western influence marker. This Spanish, this battle for Spain diplomatically has never been so intense in my entire life. It's quite interesting. Right, so, or I can put, or I can pull it from Turkey, but Turkey's two steps away. Um, I think this is the better place to pull it off. So we're going to pull it off from Spain. Give ourselves a better chance when we roll for Spain next time. Oh boy, quite interesting. All right, that's it for them. And now we go to support segment. Which, by the way, I already used the support segment to do that raid, uh, that air base attack. That's supposed to be done in the support segment, not in the uh, op option card segment. It's hard to get these things completely straight. All right. Anyway, so now it's uh, organization and movement for the Germans. Okay, so we've done the uh, operational movement phase. Marine moved back down towards Spain now. Air... Born unit in Paris, set up for an invasion if need be. Uh, then down here we've got the attack on what's left here. Um, there's no need for an air unit, we're just going to wipe it out. We got one, two, three, four, five, so it's a five, four to one, five to one attack. Here's the roll a five. <laughs> Tell you what, the Germans, every time they attack, they've taken a step. They can't afford this when they're in Russia. Okay. Yet another step is taken. All right. I don't know if I want to take that off the Italians. They're harder to get down here. And I'll take it off the Germans. This will go onto the delay box. And, uh, yeah. Boom. And boom. And then this can fly to an airbase. Where can they go? Cyprus, I guess. Oh, air path. I'm not sure they're not gonna, I don't know if they're gonna be able to go anywhere after this. They might have to, I guess they can go to the box. Let's see, they can go from, yeah, they can go from Suez to the, uh, can they, where can they go? I'm going to have to see where these Brits can fly after losing here in that area let me check it right it's quite liberal where they can go they're able to go to this middle east box that's a good place for them to hang out they could even go to kuwait if they want to um 
It's not a problem. It's a suitable base. That's the only restriction. So that's where they'll go. They'll head over to Kuwait. And we have an Air Force in Kuwait now from Suez. They flew out, waved and saluted the Germans taking their city. And that's that. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and do the reserve movement phase. Okay, so the Germans are done. They just uh, rebase a little bit in the Mediterranean. Uh, they might go for Iraq, possibly, if they can. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, in the, I'm gonna check the movement restrictions. I'm just double checking. It's the reserve movement phase that units can only move one hex in unfriendly territory, which would include. Transjordan and Palestine as British dependents. Uh, not so sure, though. They're only dependents. That may not apply to them. I'll have to check that. That's a bit of a trickier rule uh, than I had thought. Okay, so the British now. Uh, it's their turn. So what do they do? Well, they got their lend lease out of their system. So let's take a look. And what do they have? I think it's another... Churchill Diplomacy, yeah, because they just didn't really have anything better at the time. So the Lend-Lease is discarded. And we can go ahead and rejoice in our victory on the pursuit of the Graf Spey. I do get a British infantry step, which will be well received in London. Let's see what I got. Uh, one, two, two is always nice. So now i got three units stacked in London. That's the best I'm going to do right now. So England is defended as well as they can be. And now we will do political events segment. For that, though, we have to decide what they're going to play. Don't know. They don't have a lot of the su support weapon. Uh, sorry, the support units. Situation is very equivalent. Next turn, uh, I do get an air force, and the Germans get an air force. We're going to have parity through most of the summer so far. Let's see, what can they do in the fall? Well, um, can't play Commonwealth support yet. We still have that darn war going on. Need some Pacific commitment. Operation Compass is possible. This is where I get some additional uh, stuff. Um, Western War card is not limited war. And, yeah, he didn't have the sub in the strategic warfare box. So this will be a good time to play Operation Compass, even though I probably won't have anything to attack with it. So Operation Compass will give me some more steps. Badly needed steps, especially in the Middle East, if I can get them down there, of course. Okay. So here we go. So the British. Yeah. Uh, we got Churchill Diplomacy. Plus one. Plus one on the die roll. A two. Conflicting plans, no result. So nothing happens with Churchill that turn. All right. That's too bad. What are these two new things here? I left them on there. Western military aid and lend least allies. You know, Western military aid can be good, but I think the other card is better. So we're going to stick with that. All right. Um, okay. Church of Diplomacy. Nothing happens. Movement phase. Let's take care of organization and movement now. Okay, so the British do not place any support units. So they don't do any air raids. They're going to preserve their forces. Nothing crazy is going to happen. So not much movement. They move their Canadians down to the West Africa box. From the U.S. box. There it is. And in the reserve movements, they'll be moving them. I'll do that now. Over to... I can move them to the Middle East box, or the East Africa box. Now, that East African campaign is going to end pretty soon. So, I'll be able to start invading from over here. If you look at this, we're playing with the optional East Africa campaign. Um, this is realistically allows the 
allies to walk up the Nile from off map and lets them have a chance to take this from Sudan, basically. Come down the Nile. Well, I guess up the Nile. Uh, so, yeah. the <laughs> In previous games of this, the Germans, you just load up for bear and go all the way over and nothing can be done to stop them. Here, they got to think about it a little bit. So that's pretty much going to be the end of my turn here is the Brits. Uh, there's no conditional events to worry about here. And it's going to be the Russians' turn now. Let's see what they got. Okay, so the Russians, they outgeneraled themselves by rolling poorly on the diplomatic table. The Romanians figured what was up. They joined the Axis. So when the Demand Bessarabia card comes up, as it does right now, um, at least they can get an HQ out of it and some steps. But uh, there's no neutral minor country here, and their posture is not war. So nothing's going to happen to Bessarabia. It stays Romanian. Um, but at least their HQ goes on maneuvers, and they get that out of the put it in the delay box, so at least we can take care of that. Let me do that. Okay, so I put that in the delay box, this uh, HQ here from card 20. And unusually, for a replacement card, uh, sorry, a new option card for the Soviets, I've picked the Man Turkish Frontier. Um, normally I don't do that, but there is a Western... Uh, minor uh, influence in there. So it's not going to probably go uh, German at this point. And then playing this card after he's played out all his treaty cards, it's going to be relatively safe. And they can get an extra HQ, which they won't have to play by playing the uh, Polish demand card. So that's the logic. We'll see if it backfires later. All right, so that's what's happening here. And I still got to put my three points on and then move them around. So let's do that for the Russians. So the Russians are running low on steps to deploy. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see their force pool way over here. There it is. See, they don't have a lot of infantry steps left. So they're going to build up what they can, but... Their production is limited until they start getting these conditional events in, which they can get in if total war is in effect. Or they play wartime mobilization, um, which would happen if there's not an attack on Soviet Union, but there's an attack on Britain. So, uh, yeah, I have to think about that. Okay, so they did what they can do, and there's nothing else that's permitted by the card that they've picked. So, political events, there aren't any. So that's it. We just do delays, basically. Let's take a look at the delay box here. British have two cruisers. They were going out there to sink the, the uh, Admiral Hipper. Um, and so this is the delay, uh, the delay roll situation. The two British units first. Uh, four and six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That wasn't so brilliant. Um, the two, three, four, twos for the Germans. These are minus ones. One comes in immediately. And one in two turns. Too bad those aren't absolutely critical. This fleet for the Italians is a lot more critical, and they're in next turn. Hmm. Well, that's an annoyance for the British, possibly. It's not the left in the Mediterranean for the British to get annoyed about, though. And then uh, the Soviet unit with a three. One, two, three. So there we go. And we get a lot of units in for the next turn. Here they come. Uh, there's a unit. Some a couple of uh, yeah, a couple of things here. 
lot of stuff really. Um, yeah, German Air Force, two, three, four, twos. Uh, BEF's finally back in the game and a good air unit. All right, so the Axis deploys first, I believe. So I'll put these in the force pool. And now I have two air forces and a surface fleet in there. And the British also, I'm gonna put this good air unit here in Manchester. I'm gonna keep, actually, I'm gonna keep something up in Edinburgh. I'll put it up there. You gotta watch where you put these things. It does make a difference for how you can use them effectively. Uh, okay, and then BEF and this. This will be nice uh, for the Russian and the armored units. They can then deploy and build up a cavalry. So they should be able to do one more production turn like that. Uh, the BEF here. Okay. And what's this one, two, three doing here? Oh, he was supposed to, he was the remnant for Port Syed, right? Okay. I think. Huh. Yeah, I only lost one step there. Okay. So, that's it. That might have been the guy who advanced. So, I think that is all they got. I don't know why it's sitting here, though. Well, Germans, you lose. If you've got units sitting on the edge of the map and you don't remember where they are, you don't get to put them back. Okay. And now we've got these Italians coming in and the fleet is back as well. So, overwhelming superiority of air. We have the Mediterranean now. A axis of the lake, essentially, except for Gibraltar. Gibraltar is extremely important. All right. And that will be the end of the delay and start of a new turn. Let's move this up and we'll get started on the New World Order. And let's see what happens. That's the first thing we do. And see if we can get Spain in because they weren't able to get anything with Churchill diplomacy like they needed. Spain, four, five, or six, again. The Germans cannot get Spain. It is unbelievable. All right. Well, <laughs> that's a huge blow. Now the thing is they did roll. Now they do roll on the diplomatic incident table. So we never know what that's going to yield. Diplomatic incident table at plus one. Here we go. So let's see what happens. Plus one, a five, border war. Well, that's what they needed, okay? A border war, that will help. Let's see what happens with the border. Excuse me, I was wrong. I rolled a four, but there's also a minus one. Oh no, I got that dip that off. Yeah, so it's a border war. I was still thinking there was a Western influence marker in Spain, but there's not, so it is a border war. And it does apply to the same country that you were rolling on because it had been selected. I can't try to apply a diplomatic incident someplace else. So, that brings in Spain. As well, the Germans have to pick a neutral country nearby. Well, it certainly makes sense to pick Portugal in this case, rather than Vichy France. So, that's what happens. So, this will activate as an allied country, and this will activate as a Axis country. Okay, we... Roll for mobilizations. The British roll, well, they'll roll the yellow die will be for them. Red die is the Spanish, two and three. So all of these guys flip, they probably go like this. Not sure the best setup there. And the Spanish, they get three flipped over. One, two, and three. Okay, there we go. The other two Spanish units are in the delay box at the moment. Right, so it's not unusual for these kinds of results to incur uh, in this game because there's just so many die rolls the Germans can do. 
and eventually something's going to fall their way, but more could have fallen their way than has so far. Now they're going to have one more roll, um, and this uh be interesting to see. They might try to pull it off in Poland. Um, might be an interesting place to roll, since it, of course, is adjacent to Germany. And, uh, you know, then go for the conquest of these other countries. Bulgaria will probably wind up being neutral for the war in that case. Uh, all right, let's go here. So, uh, the Germans, yeah, I don't know what they want to do for support. Do they want to try another raid? I think it's definitely not the good idea at this point uh, because they know they're going to be going after um, the British. Oh, by the way, I need to do the rolls for the British and the Soviet shipbuilding. They still have a chance. Here's the rolls. The Brits need a two with the yellow die. Hey, look at that. The Russians needed a one. They got a one. But in their support unit box, since they haven't had any luck getting any ships except before this got in there, they have naval purges, so they have to play that before they can actually get another new ship. So that's too bad for them. All right. So, okay, so base attacks. We could start trying to get lucky here on the British, but on the other hand, I'm going to need air units all over the place. I'm going to need some down in Spain now. I'm going to need some down in Spain. Uh, now we've got Gibraltar to take. We've got Lisbon to take. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's going to be better for them to deploy there, I think. Um, one, two. Yeah, they want to try to keep the um, Spanish at bay. Uh, of course, the Spanish would have if I had really thought about it, they would have set up a guy in a puerto, near a puerto, which is there in La Coruna. That way, um, they could get adjacent to it. What they're trying to do is prevent the British from deploying there. At the moment, they're not in a position to deploy there. Uh, we don't want them to get another unit to Gibraltar, which is adjacent to units, nor do we want them to get another unit to Lisbon. <laughs> So that would be a good deployment there. Um, by putting it here, one, two, three, the Germans could get to here. They can get an armored unit to here. The marine unit is going to be heading here. Um, their best chance, see the marine unit is interesting. It can be used, as you can see, this goes in the... We finally have a minor ally now in Portugal. Um, here's where this marine unit is interesting. You can see how it's useful to attack across here to get a shift or attack across here to get a shift. This is a employment of the marine that's not disallowed. It's actually more useful down here for Gibraltar than it is any place else, it seems. Um, okay, so we're going to send the Marines down there. We'll keep the airborne unit up here in Paris. Um, so what do we want to do here? We don't know what they picked. And I don't really have... What about the strategic warfare box? If I try raiders, I can get them into the strategic warfare box. I don't have my unit, my... Uh... Mm, it's too early for that because I want to do that later. When do I get my U-boat? 
you know, it comes in here. So that'll be a good time to, to do that. Uh, let's see here. Do I want to get supplies or troops over? It might be a good time to get as many troops over as possible. Using Alexandria, we can deploy the troop convoy. The scratch troop convoy over here in the Eastern Med, right here. Okay. That will give us some troops coming in from Italy and elsewhere. That's what we need to do. Two troop convoys. One troop to carry it to Alexandria. Next troop convoy then can carry it over to here. That's how that's going to work. Right, let's do that. Okay, ready to do other moves. Do I want to deploy any other units? Um, I could do an extended air raid. That's always interesting. You can actually successfully try to place. That's one thing to, to consider. You can do an extended air raid by trying to place something on London, for example, or on Bristol and go for an extended air raid to see if you can do a Battle of Britain. Um, with with the uh, actual air unit. Um, that gives you some modifiers on the air raid table, um, but it's a bit premature right now. I really want to do that maybe in March or April, right before the invasion, possibly in November or December. So we'll hold off on that. But we will get our best bombers for that up here. I think I only have one really, really good bomber for that. Okay, so, yep, no air raids. No deployment of anything else but the Axis convoy. Let's do our moves. Okay, so the Germans have done their moves. Uh, you can see they've flooded the Iberian Peninsula with a lot of stuff. I um, have to watch out and let, not let the British invade easily there, uh, but I think we can stop them. Uh, they don't really have a fleet for invasion, do they? No. So they really can't invade to cut off the supply lines. Remember, the, it's a very fragile supply line here, and the Germans have to be careful about it. Um, and right now, that's probably a very important thing. They could still invade here or here, potentially. Um, so it's something to watch out for. Might have to get some more troops over there for protecting that supply line. But at the moment, the British can't do anything about it. So... Uh, they do have an air base at Puerto. That's still Spanish. I, I moved through it, but I didn't s occupy it, so... One, two, three, but there's no real good place to do anything about that. Okay, so it's going to be the British's turn, British player's turn. Um, other than we are going to declare war on Iraq now, uh, because they can't build anything. Probably. Well, they could get military aid with Churchill. Um, that would be un unfortunate. Uh, maybe we want to wait one turn to do that declaration. Um, hmm. Declare war at the end of summer and then invade. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. We'll hold off on that plan at the moment. Okay, so that's all done. Oh, they don't need this here anymore. Uh, I got two guys. Anyway, yeah, better bring him to Beirut. I don't want to fail in this invasion. Let's bring him to Amman. No, that's not, that's not a bare air base because uh, it's not protected. Um, supplies, I gotta look that up. I'm not so sure supplies can roll through there or not. Alright, 
So now it's over to Churchill Diplomacy. Let's see what happens with this. Uh, it's plus one on the Churchill Diplomacy table. Yeah, Gibraltar is considered adjacent. I don't have anybody who can move over there. Okay, that's how it is. All right, here we go. Diplomacy, a four to a five. Plus one, yeah. Conflicting plans, no Churchill diplomacy. What are the Brits going to do? Well, not much they can do. They will move a guy over to Liverpool and just see what survives. Wherever it survives, they can send some things over there. Um, they've got four air units they're facing. One, two, three, four. A total of, uh, no, they got five. Um, three, they got five. They need at least four here. Two, three, let's spread them out. Four, yeah, they can't leave that empty any longer. Um, they might have an air unit coming in. Yeah, for next turn. But right now, um, I need them. I guess they're going to have to deploy... The two units they have over in Kuwait will have to be redeployed to, well, that's not a British air base, so they'll have to redeploy them to Gibraltar. So that's what's going to happen in the rebase phase. Um, not much else is going to happen for the Brits. They want to spread out as much as possible. This guy will hunker down in Lisbon. So it's gonna be hard for him to get enough uh, steps there. It's gonna be easier to take Gibraltar, but I don't have any steps that can make it there. So the only other movement is going to be here into Kuwait. So there, I've got a good defense in Kuwait, but it's not a city. Um, can't go into Iraq. We're just going to have to hang out here for now. Okay. And finally then, the Russians. Uh, there's uh, nothing they can do on their card. Basically nothing happens with their turn. So they're going to pass, and it'll be the last turn. And we have New World Order again. Okay, let me just make sure everything's completed here. We got to do die roll modifiers for the delay box. That's what's missing. So the yellow die for the cavalry and the other die. So the cavalry's five turns. Sorry, cavalry, three, four, five. But that comes in next turn, which doesn't matter either. Okay, so let me just make sure the turn is completed for all parties. Yeah, it's all completed, really. So here we go for the next turn coming in. Aha, East Africa campaign is coming in. So I think I roll on the delay. I think that goes in the delay box. And so that's how many turns after that that the campaign will be over. And Wavell will have taken that all over. Now we see some good news here. We got an interceptor coming in against the subunit. That can be useful. And we get another British, uh, a German Air Force coming in. The, yeah, they're gonna be happy to get that HQ. They need that for steps. So they're gonna be putting that on the map. And we get another mechanized unit over there for the Russians. Another U-boat comes in. So now I've got two U-boats and subfleet. So it might be time to send out the U-boats again in the support segment. Over here, the British get a four-factor air unit. Um, why do they want that? Yeah, better keep it in the home area. They'll put it up there. 
actually in Liverpool. That's a good place for it. In the expeditionary, Spanish force goes into the force pool. And the Germans. Okay. So that takes care of all that. So now the Germans have one last chance. Last bit of diplomacy for the Germans. After that, nobody's going to listen to them for that sort of thing. Well, there's a couple of things they can do. They can play a partnership country or something like that. But, um, yeah, it seems highly unlikely that, uh, well, it's not highly unlikely they can get a partnership country. That's wrong, especially if they can get Poland in. But let's try for Poland. This is our last chance. Will I ever roll a five or a six? Let's carefully, well, without, except for Hungary, yeah? I deserve at least one of these to come through, but each die roll is independent of the last one. So we might talk about that at the beginning of how many I deserve to get. But right now, it's only a five or a six, and it's a four. Well, that's another neutrals pressured. <laughs> Neutrals pressured. What good is that? Neutrals pressured. Let me see. I'm not so sure it's useful for much of anything. Well, this might be their last chance to try to get Poland in. They can pick. Uh, the faction that received this event must... Uh, uh, I can change it from neutrals pressured to minor country politics. I uh, receive this event, must select an area table and roll a die. If it's a minor country, check the following. Okay. Hmm. So Poland is in the central table. I could roll Hungary, and Hungary might start a war with Yugoslavia. That would be okay. Czechoslovakia doesn't exist. Austria doesn't exist. So I could roll Poland. Uh, I can then try for a diplomatic incident. Okay. Well, I need to roll a three on that. Let's give it a try. Just for, for fun. Let's see if I can roll a three. I rolled a six. So setback, no result. And that's it. The Germans have ended the New World Order card. And probably everybody's breathing a sigh of relief. Even the Germans are. Okay. Now we have a lot of tough decisions to make here as to what I should do. My guess is I should build up to try to take out uh, Gibraltar. Try to place some air units on it and see if we can't fight them uh, there. Whereas, um, thing is, I don't have a blitz and I don't seem to have an HQ sitting around. That's what I need. Where's my HQ? My second HQ must be in the delay box. There it is. I need it now. So, yep. Best I can do is put a couple of units in there. Uh, and try to hit it. A four to one. Hope to get two hits on it. I can use the Marine. I don't know if I can use the Marine. I might need to be able to only use the Marine in a Blitz segment. All right, so the way this works with the Marine is that it does get a shift, but only in a Blitz segment. I got a Blitz segment coming up next turn. So if I'm going to try to take anything out, it might be worthwhile to take out Lisbon. But I don't know if I can get a good attack on that. It's got eight factors. Um... I think I better wait. So I've got I've got a lot of stuff I need to attack. Uh, 
this might be time to have a battle of the North Atlantic, as I do want to prohibit uh, units coming into the North Atlantic. Um, so it could be time for a battle to place a support unit closing down these ports so they can't be used to transport. So, let's see what we can do. Yeah, the only unit that's going to be able to do that is the submarine unit because uh, although I do have an air base within three hexes of this, I, I guess I do have an air base, but I have to populate it from an air base on the coast, I think. I need to check that out. How do I put an air unit out there? And I think it has to be within three of an air base, but maybe I can occupy a puerto, then it would be three from an air base. And I got to see what kind of tricks I can do for that. Right, so first we're going to uh, get the subunit out, populate it with a sub. We're going to put it in this area. Oh, these guys came back. Let's put them back with Allied Fleet number one. Those guys are all back. Okay, so surface raiders. Yeah, I probably should prepare for that again. Um, all right. So, but we'll worry about that later. We're not going to do surface raiders this turn. Okay, so subfleet. Here we go, let's get that in the map. Subfleet, they're going to intercept that with these fighters from England, I guess. And um, this interceptor, all of these things are put in the delay box. I think these are put in the naval warfare delay box. All right, so that takes care of that. So, they're going to want to have a naval base by the time they put out an air unit into the North Atlantic. That's what they want to do. And then they can go ahead and move to a puerto. That'll be within three hexes of that, and they have a naval base uh, within three hexes of that, don't they? Yeah, Cadiz itself. That means this air unit will contest that. That won't stop them from trying to bring it in from the other side of Gibraltar. Let's zoom in over here. But there's nothing the British have that can make it from that side. So what the Germans will do is, uh, yeah, I guess they'll place an air unit from this naval base. And uh, what have I got? So I've got uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see what I got over here. The Germans want to bring some decent. So, yeah, they'll put these two in to an air unit to interdict in the Atlantic Ocean. The British, do they want to contest that with the air units that they've got? Uh, let's think about this. Right, so to contest that, uh, they've got the air base um, in Liverpool or even... Gibraltar, uh, but the Liverpool one is a better one. That's interesting. They should always have an air base there, or a naval base in Liverpool, really, for this very purpose. Um, they have to be pretty aggressive to try to contest this. Uh, let's see what they roll for aggression. They roll a one, which is very low, so they're not going to contest it. They'll go ahead and let the German air base. So anything within three hexes of an air naval base 
which would be Gibraltar, and they need to make a naval base here in Puerto, which they can do before the British can do anything about it. Um, yeah, uh, so they can they can stop them from getting any transport because both of these ports, Puerto and Gibraltar, will be shut down. This is our this is off by now. Okay. So, very interesting. So, yes, these guys go into the used asset box. This uh, does not get used. And the Germans are shutting down the naval bases to keep the British from coming in to help out. Very intelligent. So you'll notice something strategically about this situation. When you're attacking... Gibraltar, you got to constitute units um, that are on Spanish soil. So you better take Gibraltar the first time, or you're going to have to discombobulate your units, and you won't have enough steps if you don't have an HQ, and they don't have an HQ. So I don't think the attack on Gibraltar is going to happen this turn. So the question is, do I want to attack? up here and <laughs> I'm really out of position to do that. I really need more troops down here. So I think we're not going to be attacking down there at all. But we're going to be present preventing them from reinforcing it. That's all I want to do there. Okay, on this front, I did not declare war on Iraq. I'm going to maintain a troop convoy here. I want to get some more troops into the area. And uh, yeah, how do they want to do that? Uh, how do the Germans want to get more troops down here into the Syrian and sector? We've got an extra unit on Malta that we can send over. And a troop convoy to Alexandria. And... Uh, I guess try to send down one more in the reserve movement phase. So, yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, that's it for support unit stuff. No more air raids here. I don't think I want to try that. Uh, I don't even have the right... Uh, I could do a small air raid down here on Gibraltar um, to take out some of their air. Hmm. Yeah, why not? I can do one air raid a turn. Let's send in some ME-110s or JU-88s from Seville. They're going to go in. They do the air raid die. Where is that? Base attack table. It's not an air raid. I keep calling it that. Base attack. Here it comes. It's not a sustained attack. That would be interesting to do at some point. I'm going to have to try that in the Battle of Britain. Uh, and, um, uh, yes, there's no CV strike unit. Okay, so we're just trying to get an air raid with three overclassed skies. Uh, I wonder why they have a distinction between overcast skies and target away. What difference does it make? It's the same result, I guess, for a little color. So, sorry, they weren't able to do it. And this goes to the used box also. Okay, well, that's it for the air raid. And let's continue to move around here. So I've got um, somebody coming from Malta. This guy will come to there. And um, yeah, I guess we have to... We can't really move. I don't have supplies down here. So, no movement around here. That's it. Up here, I, I need to deploy more troops. I'm going to have to break down the Paris unit. That's okay. I do need to get a 663 back. So, the Paris unit will deploy. Six six three goes to the 
delay box, here they come into Paris, and then they're going to head down, really, one, two, I don't really want this to be the garrison here, so he's going to go back to Paris, and these guys will go one, two, three, this guy will garrison that, he'll go one, two, three, and over here, one, two, three, getting them into Spain. Here, uh, what we need to do is probably get, uh, get a German unit here. Mm, a 663 is what I need. Two, three. Yeah, well, we'll see if we can build a 663 there, otherwise an HQ. Right now I can build an armored unit here, and it can move over here to get an armored shift. So, to do everything we can to get a good result on that, we will send some Spaniards in that way. Oh yeah, that's right, I have to get into a puerto. So, one two, three, and then reserve movement to there. Okay, now let's do the reserve movement because there's no attacks. Into a Puerto. Seville's got some stuff. I got an air base there. I went to Bilbao. Okay, and you really need a lot of stuff to take out the Iberian Peninsula. I forgot how much you really need to do a good job, or you need a lot of air, that's for sure. I'm going to have to send more air units down. I don't have enough. Let's send another air unit down from... Uh, to Madrid. Or actually, to a Puerto. Uh, Bilbao. Bilbao. Okay, that's two. That's not enough. Um... <laughs> Just don't have enough. Just can't get enough. All right, well, I think we need to send another two-factor unit over from Syria. Just need to have as many air units as possible and put him on Madrid. Okay, we've populated enough air units, hopefully, for an effective assault there. And we got to spread out. We only have two air units left in this area now. So every time you move some air units around, Ultra tells the allies where to move the air units back. All right. Still, that's it. Over here, we're going to do some rearranging. And then Africa area. Uh, I want to bring in... What was I going to do? Uh, uh, I guess I was going to bring in this Napen the guy from Naples is going to come in and he'll come into Toronto I'll go one, two, three. I've got to take a look at this movement limit in the dependents. Yeah, I recalled that correctly. These dependents, they can zip through and go one, two to there. This dependent can stay in Alexandria. This German will stay here. This guy landed in Alexandria, so he'll go one, two, uh, three. Um... Right, he would have been up there, so he would go to here and keep an airbase there. These guys will go back. God. All right. Keep that in Suez. So you go one, two, three to there. The Germans here could move up. Get ready to do something here uh, with these Italians that are coming in. Also in Iraq, and I guess they're going to declare war 
now. So they'll declare war on Iraq. This goes to the Allied side as a minor. And now the British can move in to Baghdad. Yeah, so they probably will. Um, but I need to get into Iraq, and I want to use my other guys to take out Yugoslavia, which is a thorn in my side. So I need to go get Yugoslavia and Greece the hard way. All right, so that's it for the Germans. Quite a momentous turn in some ways. Moving stuff all over the place really takes some thinking. This is what happens with the Germans is you get more and more spread out, the more you have to really think about assets. And with Schiffskrieg on, overlaid on top, you really have to think about it. Um, so yeah, for example, right now, you know, I should probably... You know, I got somebody in the North Atlantic, but I don't have anything up there. So if he tries to land, which he's not going to do now... Uh, so eventually I'll need some air assets up there in Norway. Okay, well, all that said, let's get on with it. The Germans are done. No attacks. The British can't reinforce Gibraltar, so they don't have to think about it. And they're just going to do their Churchill diplomacy with A6. It is a guarantee table, because they're adding plus one to that anyway. On the guarantee table, adding one to this. A four. Conflicting plans, no result. So, that's it. Churchill diplomacy was a total bust this time. Really was. Okay, so the Brits can't do much of anything. Um, they're going to stay quite happy with their current deployments. Although, yeah, they are going to send an air unit where... Gee, they don't really want to send one from there. Um, got some stuff in the delay box. Got one. Nothing coming next turn. Um, would like to have something on Baghdad. I'm going to have to. I'm just going to have to put something on Baghdad. I'll put it uh, from Edinburgh. And I'll use a good... Good guy from in Kuwait, one of my best units. These guys are going to move up. They've got supply in Kuwait. They're moving up, and they will move into Baghdad in the reserve movement phase. Nothing else going on for the Brits anywhere else. They can't bring in any troops yet. Uh, so that's that. Um, that is that. So... Yeah, they won't be attacking probably next turn. But just in case, the Liverpool dude will move. I always got to remember, I always have Scapa Flow on that flank as, as well. So the Liverpool guy will move back to London just in case the Germans are going to try to sneak attack into the British Isles, which they probably will not be able to do. Okay, that's it. So we got delays. Let's figure this out. All right, so let's check this out for the delay rolls. So we got a troop convoy, a gray die roll, and a blue die roll for these. These are at minus one, two, and three. One, two, and three. There, okay, so now we have the East Africa box. That's important. So, um... It uses British die rolls for this. As soon as this comes back on the map, the Sudan campaign is over, and they can start coming in on the southern edge of Egypt there. So let's roll these. We'll have uh, blue, yellow, and white. Blue, yellow, white. Blue, yellow, white. Two turns for the East Africa, so that's going to end quickly. Yellow. Uh, this air unit's going to be five turns out in three five and white two turns for the interceptor that's pretty good for that all right now what's left is this submarine on the u-boat submarine will be the black die oh the submarine rolls so i got the u-boat in next turn but the submarine rolled a six plus 
6, 12, minus 1, so 11 turns. Oh, the subfleet's out. That's helpful. That's really unfortunate for the Axis. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Way out there. Way out there. And that will end it, folks. I'm going to try to plop this all together. It's going to be a pretty big file I'm going to put together. So, uh, whew, spent hours on it already today. I might be done for today. So, uh, that's it, folks. We'll be moving on. Let's go ahead and move the turn track marker up. The Germans will get their air units back. Let's uh, put an extra bomber here in a puerto. Not that one. We'll put that. Uh, we want this one in the British. Uh, it's British. This one. Yeah, we'll put this one here and another one here. Look at that. I got all these subs and stuff. I got the HQ. So now I can really attack Gibraltar realistically. So that's important to consider. All right. And the subs. So there's all the subs and stuff. And I get one Romanian expeditionary unit. So everything that came in this turn was Axis. Okay. So. Yep. That's going to be it. We're into August, September. And we're three seasons away from total war.